All right, welcome back, guys, to the fourth session of the Amalthea Group. Uh, I just have one very quick and exciting announcement. Uh, if you haven't been following me on Twitter or you're not in my Discord, well, this is news for you. Uh, the good news is that all of my sessions from pretty much this part at ah, this point forward uh, are going to be hosted on both iTunes and Podbean. So if you, you know, listen on your way to work, listen while you're working out, listen in general, uh, this is a solution for you. You can grab the audio version on iTunes, on Podbean, and uh, there's even links on my subreddit. Yes, I have a subreddit now. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't think we have anything in the way of announcements, so let's just go ahead and jump in. And today, uh, we are going to be a Ophion-centric episode with cutbacks to the Amalthea crew every once in a while. And I believe Panek has the opening log. Captain's log. Stardate 62872.3. The Ophion is currently en route to the system the Lysithia detected as the origin point of the drone control signal. Due to our damaged superstructure, Captain Merthrin has sent the Io and Ganymede as escorts. This also presents another complication. Even with the diligent work of, Ch of Chief Cranston, we are unable to make use of Ophion's multi-vectored assault mode. I shall have to coordinate an adapted strategy with the escort commanders while in transit. As to what we will find within the system, I am unable to infer. The actions of these caretakers are mostly logical. Why simply contain the Marissa to the planet if they are willing to use lethal force on them? What do they benefit from doing so? Had they wished to conquer them, they could have easily done so. Contrastly, were they meant to be protecting them, why would they impede their development? I find it highly unlikely that beings with such obscure and illogical methods are open to reason. We shall see what our foray can elucidate and log. All right. So, uh, before you arrive, we're going to have a quick senior staff meeting. And because Mirthrin is not here today, uh, Shatsu will be filling in for him. And yeah, I would say you guys are maybe about an hour or two, maybe less, uh, out from the system at the moment. But yeah, take it away. Well, I've been going over the, the logs, Captain, and the, the sensor scans. Well, I've been going over the reports, the logs, or sensor scans. I'm a first officer now. I'm, I don't have nearly as much time to bury myself in the lab as I'd like. Uh, it seems like this um, drone ship was a, uh, what's the word, a barbarian, I think it is. Kind of a, a self-replicating ship that kind of seeks out and attacks randomly and wildly. The a, a barbarian ship. This is a, like, an interesting talk. Berserker, that's the word. Called a, uh, from old uh, speculative fiction. It's able to self replicate so it can make more of itself? Correct, yes. It, uh, it finds appropriate war resources, destroys alien ships, and then makes more of itself, which then spread out and then um, prevents. Prevents any competition effectively. It is a, well, either a deterrent or a, a, a scorched earth method preventing space travel. Does the rest of the fleet know this? We really should tell someone because we have one that's unpowered, but that's a problem. Well, as long yeah. as it remains unpowered, it can't self replicate itself. And berserkers like this, they're, it's the, the amount of. Automation required to make a, a a ship is well an effective ship is fairly low tech. We we were able to defeat it with a, a single ship. The cat them um, whoever made this is probably not as advanced as us, so we should be able to hold our own fairly well. They, be sure they, to just, sorry. Be sure to pass along a security report to the Amalthea. Please yes, continue. These are designed to target um, simple burgeoning warp capable species this would obviously have given the uh the, the phoenix a run for its money or maybe even the nx enterprise but even a constitution ship should be able to hold its own what can we just what can we infer from their this purpose what, what does this the creators of this probe benefit from 
do, do, do they send resources back? We don't... Without actually having powered it up and activating its main computer, it's hard to tell. And it doesn't seem... It seems to have very basic programming. Uh, it looks like it's designed to uh, passively hunt down energy signatures and other ships, drain them of energy, and then use the ships and the raw resources to repair itself or replicate. It doesn't seem to be focused on uh, attacking non-useful targets or destroying targets, then thereby depleting itself for resources. They, um, they, they do have an ability to communicate that's quite advanced, which um, I, I'd, I'd love to study more if we had the opportunity, because it, it's apparently can receive instructions hundreds of light years away. But so I can definitely communicate and report back. But... Well, hopefully we'll, you'll have more chance with, once we enter the system. Commander Shatsu. Yes, sir. I'd like you to begin formulating a adapted strategy with the Callisto commanders. With the Ophion's damage the way it is, we're going to have to maintain a maximum distance from any combat. I'd like you to begin drawing up plans for strafing uh, engagements with the Callistos. Understood, sir. I will have it done. How are the repairs coming, Mr. Cran uh, Chief Cranston? Well... <clears throat> I've been able to work some miracles and get us uh, uh, somewhat put back together. Some of the holes are being filled, but uh, we're still going to need some time, and I would really like it if we could stay as far away from enemy weapons as humanly possible. Or, or to turn a phrase. We will endeavor to do so, Mr. Cranston. Lieutenant Heverin, how are your complications with the injured staff going? Well, sir, we've received... I'm going to slide a pad over. Um, on the several crew members that we I've begun uh, treating, we've got limited mobility up with uh, wheelchairs, uh, crutches, and a few very simple bio bionics. They are functional, if not 100%. Uh, once we return to the fleet, sir, I would like your permission to transfer uh, these, per uh, these crew members and myself for a short period of time over to the Red November. Uh, they have a far de more detailed uh, cybernetics and prosthetics capability than we do here. I'll make sure it's done so. Also, uh, looking at the list, I'll say make sure that these people are these crew members are taken off of uh, battle station duty once we get yes. inside a uh, combat situ situation. Yes, sir. Is there anything else? I look like I'm about to say something and then. Uh, no, no, not at this time, sir. I'm just brainstorming ideas for what I can do to assist once our fleet is fully operational. This is certainly the form in which to do such a thing, Lieutenant. Please, share your ideas. Well, sir, my with, uh, with a few cycles I've been able to examine uh, Chief Cranston's uh, prosthetic. I'm... Not going to lie, sir, I have some very interesting ideas that I've been looking through. Um, I'm hesitant to bring it up in this way, but and I'm just going to tap my uh, medical tricorder that I'm wearing around my face. This sort of wearable technology is, has been a big boon to my, myself and my productivity, and I'm surprised that such designs are not standardized. I'd like to during my downtime, of course, work on increasing the efficiency of tricorders and our and our, the other devices that we use to interface with technology on a regular basis, sir. I can see no downside to such developments. Please make use of the R&D lab that Mr. Locke is currently lacking time to work in. I, will, I can forge you my schematics for Vanessa, my tricorder. I have, I have increased its sensor capabilities quite a bit. Well, sir, the reason I'm hesitant to bring it up is it involves some diagnostics done on salvaged Borg technology from the invasion. Their, adapt, their um, cybernetics are intrusive and extensive, and, you know, the potential of recreating the Borg species is devastatingly scary. But there is technology that we could learn from them. Indeed. I also see why you are hesitant. Such developments are dangerous. We must proceed with caution. 
any research and development you do regarding that needs to be within a closed system. I don't want to have to deal with my ship suddenly assimilating itself in the middle of our situation. Yes, sir. Um, I, if I recall correctly, one of the science labs was set up to have a full isolation or sandbox mode in place. I will endeavor to work with them. Chief and of course, Kranson, keep you all up to date. Chief Cranston, would you be willing to help her with the, uh, that regards when you have time that you're not repairing the Ophion, of course? Uh, absolutely, Captain. I have no problem helping, uh, helping the good lieutenant here. I can also assist if needed. Thank you. It's nice to work with um, open-minded individuals. The whole this tri this uh, tricorder I were kind of scared several patients when I was working on them the first time. I had to make it uh, glow blue instead of the uh, red the first time. That <clears throat> sorry, sirs. Well, everyone knows blue is the best color. Well, of course. Of course. Lieutenant Commander, I think you might be a little biased. Yes, well. Very well. It seems you all have a good grasp on what needs to be done. Unless there's anything else, you're dismissed. I would have some suggestions. Um, I'd like to pose some ideas regarding the uh, berserkers. They don't have uh, a lot of. They don't have very advanced sensors, and we could, in some way, rig ourselves up to emit uh, the our transponder signatures to match other the, the drone we do have, which might make us less detectable, and also being able to shut down our power at a moment's notice. It also might um, cause them to lose interest in us. It'd also be very useful to use take that advantage of that and actually lure someone to trap. If we had, say, the Io and the Ophion power down or mask ourselves as a Berserker while the uh, Ganymede continues to operate normally, uh, other caretaker ships and drones might approach them and leave themselves well flanked and vulnerable. These are sound tactical strategies. See if you can replicate this sensor masking on the escorts. Also, do we still have that data dump from the... I'm struggling to remember the name of the species we ran into that did this, but where they kind of white-noised our sensors with a bunch of junk data? Oh, I haven't looked at that in years. Uh, I'm sure it's in probably one of the archives. Dig it up, please, Commander. It might come in handy. Hi, Captain. I'll just look around at everybody else. Very well. You're dismissed. All right. So uh, it sounds like you guys are going to be working on something in the interim uh, during that time. And just so that we're all on the same page, I believe you are working on what specifically? Well, the captain wanted to have the like was it that allow the escorts to mask themselves. Mm -hmm. Think that be. Okay. Sort of uh, alter their transponder or power senior source so they're undetectable to the berserkers. Okay. Uh, let's do this then. Uh, let's have either a daring science or a daring engineering. Uh, I'm going to make the difficulty here a three. And we will need to do a task for each of the Callistos. So one for the IO and one for the Ganymede. And you may assist each other on this, but only one assist per roll. Locke is not particularly daring, so maybe our uh, our chief engineer should take the lead and he can assist. Um, daring engineering, I'm sitting at a 14. Yeah, higher than me. I'm sitting okay. at a 13. I'm all about the control and reason. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, and you said it was difficulty what? Three. Do 
to the rest of the crew. Do we want to start with a bunch of momentum, but I won't have a determination? Hmm. Um, we could do that, or have the assist do the ship's assist? The ship will not assist for this, because this is you tweaking the uh, transponder signal. Uh, so you're directly modifying the ship, so I don't think the ship would assist you. Gotcha. Yeah, Starfleet ships don't like it when you start messing with their transponder signals and saying they're something that they're not. Um, Remember, you can yeah, sure. always give me threat for extra dice. I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to go the no combat route, so if you don't have threat, then that lessens the chance of possibly there being combat. <laughs> um... I'm going to go ahead and blow Spirit of Discovery. Okay. For three momentums to the group pool. Okay. The value that I'm going to use to spend my first determination is a theory for every situation. Okay. And I will spend one of those momentums for this first roll. Okay. Let's see what happens. And um, applicable focus. Uh, I'll start with the bigger ones: uh, starship power systems, starship computer systems, starship weapon systems, or even improvisation. I would say improvisation would apply here. Okay. Okay. Two. So two successes. Lock, are you assisting or am I? Um, I think I'm assisting. Probably a gadgeteering focus. Yeah, gadgeteering could apply here. Nope. All right. So, yeah, uh, we'll say that uh, you start to try and mess with the IO's transponder signal, and unfortunately, you just can't get it quite right. Like, you're able to switch it to, at a very surface scan, appear to be a drone ship on sensors, but a subsequent sensor sweep even you know judging on what you know of the drone ships um even the drones if they were to scan the vessel again they would detect the subterfuge so it probably isn't going to work for the io now you can attempt this again for the ganymede uh but you only have time to uh try again uh try once more i should say so you can try the, the ganymede or kind of bend orders and go for the uh Ophion. I would suggest the Ophion as the captain because we are we are damaged and so we don't want them heading straight for us right away. If we could if we could mask ourselves and have the escorts engage them first and then pop out to you know. I'm down. Um I I do have a question then. If I'm working on the Ophion, mm -hmm. uh does the being chief engineer lessen the difficulty? It does, but I'm going to spend four threat to up the difficulty to a four. So it would bring it down to a three or a two? A uh, four overall. Huh. Well, shit. Uh, then unless we completely ace this, uh, I don't think we're going to make it. So, but might as well try <clears throat> Right, so same rolls, and, uh, and I will spend a uh, another momentum on this one too. Okay, so we're, you have one momentum remaining at the moment. I earn. I made those momentum. I might as well spend it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, nice. Very nice. That's three successes. All we need to see is an assist from Locke. Drum roll. Oh Ooh. god. No. Uh oh. Ooh. Uh, okay. I think I know what I want to use for that complication. Uh, that complication is, uh, when you attempt to basically, you know, switch from Ophion mode to drone mode, uh, something happens with the comms array. And since, Locke, you were the one to roll the complication, I would like you to roll me one challenge dice, please. That's a zero. Right. 
So, good news. You don't blow out the comms array. Uh, however, uh, any future uh, attacks to hit you are at a, at a decreased difficulty because you are essentially broadcasting out into the void at maximum strength. I, I seem to remember Locke getting this kind of uh, complication before way back when. It does seem to be a theme with him. Awfully loud for a spy. I mean, is <laughs> is uh, is it this time saying uh, I'm an alien? A AMA? <laughs> it's uh, well, it, you're trying to mask the signature, and unfortunately, if you get the the amplitude wrong, it kind of you overcorrect and instead of masking the signature, it's turned the signature into the mask. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Cranston will will look at Locke and, uh, well, Commander, uh, good news, bad news. Good news is, uh, if anybody gets in trouble for this, it'll probably be you. Bad news is, well, you're the one in trouble. Well, won't be the first time. But, hey, at least we got it to work on us. But I think every one of these caretaker ships in this quadrant is going to know where we're at. Well, if we power down the IO and gain mean at least, they might uh, not be interested in them and instead be interested in us. We are now, uh, what's the word? Hanking. We are drawing lots of something. We're, we, we are the bait. Yes. Mm. Well, uh, I, I think that idea is probably a good idea, and you should probably tell the captain that, that at least if the other ships stay hidden and quiet, Maybe they can come in like the switch for our bait. Yeah, so we, their, their passive sensors are pretty pretty weak. Um, we should almost overwhelm them with the, with the amount of signal we're broadcasting. So if they, if they power down to minimum power, they should just fly right past the, the escorts on their way to us, and then the escorts attack uh, them from un, unnoticed. That's a good theory. Let's hope it pans out. <laughs> that's, yes, let's. I that's, need that's another reprimand. <laughs> all right so uh as all that information comes out uh we're going to cut to the bridge and you guys have arrived at the edge of the system and at the moment uh you are not detecting uh anything major uh your first basic scan of the system reveals that this is a still in formation uh stellar body uh, and by that I mean that it's sort of like a nebula that's on its way out. Uh, the sun that is in the system is a large red giant. And there are no planets per se, but there are multiple asteroid belts. And if you want anything else, you are going to have to do some rolls for me. Uh, sorry, can Cal be on the bridge, please? Sure. Uh, let me find you and throw you on the bridge. Let's see, there you are. And I'll shrink you down. Go try to redeem myself by scanning as best I can. Okay. So that's going to be a reason science, assisted by the ship's sensors science. And the difficulty here is going to be a three after I spend some threat to make it a little bit more difficult. Basically, you know, looking for any caretaker ship. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Does the ship get you an assist? There's only two successes there, so you need that. I've got the ship sheet. What was the roll? Sensor science. It does. Nice. In fact, it gets you a momentum. Very good. So uh, I'm going to put you on this map preemptively, just so you can see what's going on and to make explaining things er a little bit easier. Uh, so if you want to zoom all the way out, uh, you should be able to see you guys are on the right side of the screen, and on the left side of the screen are ships, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but what's most important is what's between you guys and the caretaker drones. So uh, what you see is that there are these uh, sort of artificial Pluto-sized moons that are interspersed throughout the asteroid belt. Uh, that's between you and the actual active caretakers. Um, you detect that several of these moons 
are natural, but they also have something about them that would indicate they're artificial. Maybe it's their mass, uh, maybe it is their uh, wavelength that they're putting off. There's just something artificial about them that would suggest that they are, obviously, uh, created in some way. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that, obviously, there are two larger caretaker-style uh, drones that are currently just sort of idling in space. Uh, I would say that they have about two scale on you guys. Uh, wait a second, no, you guys are scale five. So they have one more scale on you guys, even if their tokens are a little bit larger. Um, and for those who can't see, so for the benefit of the audio podcast, uh, these carriers, for lack of a better term, sort of look like a flattened pancake. Uh, they have a greenish, almost Borg-like sort of machinery across them, but they are definitely not Borg. They are some sort of machinery that does not appear to have any sort of uh, life support or really any internal corridors. Uh, it seems to be like the first Caretaker drone you encountered. They are very much singular and, as you found out, self-replicating. Uh, but that's what you get with your base success. You may spend momentum to ask me additional questions. I think I get one free question because I'm a science officer, though. That is correct, yes. Yeah. So what would your free question be? Uh, how many drones do I think they carry, like the smaller ones you found? So if you had to do a ballpark estimate just based on their size, uh, I would say that their fighter wing could be comparable to the Amalthias. If not more, because most of their space is designed to carry things like drones rather than, say, deal with people. Definitely could be fighting quite a lot of ships here. This system certainly is a change from the Marissa's, which was practically barren of, of, of any planetary bodies or asteroid fields. What could the drone purpose be in creating such a system? Hmm. The moons might be some sort of factory. We need to get closer to get a, a really good scan of them. All I know is they're artificial. I didn't detect any obvious signs of manufacturing or inhabitation. Uh, that was just my, my brief sensor sweep. You could Are spend there any momentum lives? to ask me questions. Yeah. Can I spend a momentum to look for life signs? Uh, I'm just going to say, you? without needing the momentum spend, that uh, these are the same as your first Caretraker drone that you came across. Uh, no, there are no life signs present. Yeah, not even from the moons? Not even from the moons. Fair enough. Commander Locke, hail the IO and uh, tell them to give a pass-by sensor reading of the nearest artificial moon. Hi, Captain. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and have you guys situate yourself where you guys want to be. So go ahead and move your token around. Plop yourself uh, where you would like to be. I think we should be a little bit farther behind where the escorts are, just kind of at a, at a range, maybe right Okay. <laughs> and you should be able to you, uh, move the, the Ganymede and the Io. Uh, the Io, I was guessing you want it, like, here? Yeah. Okay. Just, just a quick pass by, turn back around. What if we um, situated the, like, the Io by behind one of the moons? So it, it, the moon masks its sensors, and then we position ourselves over here so they have to fly past the Io or the, the escorts to get to us. That makes sense. All right. Go ahead and move your tokens around to your desired position. Uh, which moon do we want to go to? The, this one we're at? or If we go farther um, galactic north, it might take the other ship longer to respond, if it even responds to us.
Okay. So, uh, way we're going to do this for the IO, uh, if one of you can roll me 2d20, and then if someone can get the IO sheet, this is a reason and science. I have uh, the IO sheet. Unfortunately, don't even bother with the IO because your target number was a 13 and you rolled a 16 and a 14. So IO goes in, IO attempts to scan and whoever's in command of the IO reports back that unfortunately they are unable to uh, penetrate the ships, or not the ships, the moon's surface. However, they are able to confirm that it is metallic in nature. Well, it should help mask the, the IO and the Ganymede. And I would like uh, the IO. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's what I'm rolling. All right, uh, I'm going to roll something to see if the drones have noticed the IO. Uh, yeah, with two sixes, uh, what's going to happen is that as the IO is doing its scans, uh, even you guys on the Ophion are going to notice that the two caretaker drones are powering up engines and starting to move in that direction. And we are going to start combat. So let me put up a turn order, uh, get everyone in. I think the way we're going to do the uh, Ganymede and the Io, so that it's not like super overpowered, um, I'm going to basically give you guys... Um, I don't want to say this. The Io and the Ganymede are able to move and attack, and we will still track breaches and shields for them. But as long as you're not, like, spamming phasers, we're not going to even worry about their power to start off with. Um, why is it not letting me add Ophion to the turn order? Hold on. Okay, there we go. I don't know what that was about. All right. So uh, what we'll do for the Io and the Ganymede is I will put them in the turn order, and we're just going to have to remember to do them. So let me put this in. So carriers are scale six, you guys are scale five, and the Io and the Ganymede are each gonna get a single move and shoot action. Okay, and then as you guys decide what to do first, uh, I will adjust the stream. But yeah. Red alert. Uh, Cal runs down and prepares sick bay. Seamus probably already has it prepared, but it's best to do it in person. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, what would you guys on the Ophion like to do next? Well, if these are carriers, I'd like to bring the IO back to regroup uh, and start taking out some, start, you know, preparing for this wave of drones that are going to be coming. Uh, once they get a little closer, I think we should change our strategy and have one Callisto focus on intercepting fighters and the other harassing the carrier. Okay. So what is your starship action going to be? Crew suggestions? What do you guys think? Hmm. I think we need to get their attention. I think we need to open comms and start really flooding the flooding signals. Yeah, probably a scan for advantage talent. They need to be closer for me to get a really good scan for that. But yeah, I will say if Just you simply way. want to try and get their attention, uh, this would be a uh, open hail or hailing frequencies open task. Uh, that would be a control engineering, and the ship would assist with communications and engineering. And the benefit of this is it's a difficulty zero, so it is a way for you guys to get momentum. Very well, Mr. Locke. Open hailing frequencies. I kept it. All right, so Locke, since you're the one doing it, a control engineering, please. And if someone can get the Ophion's communications and engineering. I got it. Roll20 just is refusing to open my sheet for me. Yeah, Roll20 is being a little bit slow today. Well, uh, that's a complication for the Ophion. Uh, let's see what uh, 
lock rolls before we start worrying about that, though. Hmm. <laughs> See if I can BS any of my focuses, but I think. Oh, that's a that is a crit. So two successes. It is two successes. So you could either go up to five momentum, or you could spend the momentum you just got to get rid of that complication. You know, I, I think we need the extra momentum, and hey, threat makes the game fun. Okay, this time I would like you to roll me two challenge dice, and since it was Panek that rolled the complication, uh, Deku, if you would be the one to roll the two challenge die, please. Okay, so this time, you do have a breach to communications. So take one breach to communications as the uh, work that Cranston and Locke did earlier. Uh, something about it, some residual uh, power buildup, causes a breach to the communications array. Uh, Mechanics-wise, I don't think it does much, but let me double check. Uh, okay, so until you perform the restore minor action the communication systems cannot be used to perform or assist in any task and additionally any outgoing or persistent activities that require the communication systems uh, are immediately halted and cannot be performed until the restore minor action has been performed so if you wanted to start hailing other vessels you can't do that until you do the restore minor action so much for hailing them commander Well, oh, that was unfortunate. Because so, I'm like, communicating with the IO and Ganymede. Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. Uh, so what we're going to do next is we're going to have uh, Carrier A go first. And Carrier A is going to simply move. And let me check distances here. It can move up to six. All that right. was our communications action, right? The blue one? Uh, no. Uh, communications, I never put the dot on because, honestly, I think this is the first time we've ever used communications in Starship Combat. So, just don't worry about it. Uh, but do make sure you have the breach to communications noted on the Ophion sheet. It is. Alright, very good. Alright, so Carrier A is going to move up to here. And I'm going to spend some threat for them to retain the initiative. And they are going to not only, uh, as a minor action, launch, ah, launch fighters, but they are also going to open up fire with their disruptor arrays. So, uh, the good news here is that the IO is a, uh, it's a pretty beefy ship. Uh, I don't think it'll be an issue, but let's see what happens. All right, so uh, they did get the two successes that were required to hit the IO. So remind me, since I don't have the sheet up at the moment, does the IO have a blade of armor? No, multiple adaptive shielding. Okay, so in that case, the IO is going to be taking a grand total of nine damage. And that means that uh, I think you have, what, one shield remaining, two shield remaining? Two. Okay. So you will be suffering a breach on the IO. So let's see what we got for the IO. Okay, so that is important. So the IO uh, has suffered a breach to sensors. And if I recall correctly, that means that until you are able to perform the restore minor action, which I'll do because we're running them as NPCs, uh, their attacks made by the ship increase in difficulty by one. So let's say that in order to fix that, they would have to spend one of their two turns to do the restore minor action. But yeah, that's uh, that's caretaker A. Uh, let's go back to the Ophion. Uh, can I do the minor action to get communications back up? You can indeed. Because so you know, uh, as of yet, I don't need to repair anything, so... Yeah, so you, uh, you know, you divert some energy around the damage components, make it so the communications come back online, but you still have your normal action to do. What's the, what's the long range distance? Uh, the long range is anything between 7 and 10. Uh, I'd like to suggest we move closer in to begin uh, giving support fire to the IO with those fighters. Well, it because Cranston was the one who did the minor action, it would be Cranston's uh, action to do. Uh, 
What are you going to do, Cranston? I mean, I don't have that talent to repair during combat. Otherwise, I would repair during combat. Right. Um. I I have no idea. Well, I mean, uh, anybody else can do the minor action. I I didn't realize that it would become my turn. Yeah. So um, I just so about that let's part. let's do it that way. Uh, but moving forward, if you are the ones doing the minor action, you have to be the one making the turn. So. Because we're being nice, let's say that whoever would actually like to go can do the minor action, and then we'll resolve whatever task it is you're trying to do. Cool. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what would you guys like to do then for your actual action? Uh, if anyone has anything better than moving forward, any ideas? I'm uh, all for moving forward. Yep, makes sense. We are in torpedo range. We could, that might also take out a few fighters. Mm-hmm. So there's uh, two ways you can move. Uh, if you do not want to spend any power, you can move anywhere within six units. If you want to move beyond six units, if you want to move seven to ten units, you must spend one power. Uh, but the benefit here is that it is a difficulty zero task. So you could be getting momentum from this. I can do it. Okay. So this is going to be a control plus con. And if someone can get the ship's engines and con, it's a difficulty zero. Would my warp mechanics focus apply? If you were going to warp, I would say yes, but this is impulse speed, so unfortunately no. Okay, so you get two momentum, including one floating. And you guys can go ahead and move up to six units. What is it? Uh... Maximum long range. Well, I mean, well, I guess, uh, to I have the wrong tool selected. <laughs> that one. F18, I think. So that let's, let's check distances. So that would put you at eight units away from the carrier. Which means that uh, you could still hit them with torpedoes without any difficulty increase. Uh, however, you are out of range for uh, anything involving your phaser arrays. I think this is good. Torpedoes for the carrier, and then I figured the fighters are going to get closer to the IO, and that will bring them in range of the phasers. Okay. Alrighty. So, uh, up next is actually going to be Carrier B, and Carrier B is going to do the same thing where it moves and fires. So let me measure distances here so it can move up to six. Let's see, yeah, let's put it there. And then check distances again. Nope, give me the ruler tool. Okay. Looks it's like you to... are all within long range, so it will spend more threat and fire a torpedo at the IO. Is it able to hit the IO around the moon? It is at an increased difficulty. It is a difficulty four to hit it. So yeah, a torpedo flies out from the caretaker carrier. Uh, streaks almost like it's going to move around the artificial moon. And at the last possible second, or so it feels like, the moon's gravity well... Uh, drags the torpedo in an arc, and it soars harmlessly by the IO. And uh, before we go back to the Ophion, let's have the IO act. So what would you like the IO to do? Remember, uh, it would have to perform the restore minor action, or it is at a plus one difficulty to shoot. Well, definitely going to restore that, because we need them shooting. Okay. We don't want them having complications with that. So, restore minor action, done. Okay. What, what do we want the IO to do? We want him to start focusing on the carrier and whittling its shields down so we can torpedo it? Or do you want us to engage the fighters, you think? I'm all for taking out the big... the uh, Focus on the big carriers. Because if... Yeah... What's the agree. what's the phaser modification for extra shield damage? Uh, well, because you are using phasers, 
uh, you are given the versatile two quality. And that means that as long as you hit, you have two bonus momentum, which is not saved to the pool. But you could conceivably spend that two bonus momentum on four piercing. That sounds good to me. I'd have them go in with a strafing run with phasers against the carrier. Eh? Okay. Okay. So, just so we're on the same page, uh, are you going to be using your phaser arrays or your phaser cannons? Cannons. Okay, so to do cannons, you will have to move closer, which you can do, no problem. Uh, but uh, you will now be at close range with carrier A. Okay. All right. So let's say uh, for your movement, you get it to about there. And yeah, if you want to, whoever feels lucky, uh, one of you needs to handle a 2d20 roll. The target number is 13. And someone needs to roll the IO's weapons and security, please. I can roll the uh, IO. Okay. Plus security. Is, was there a second person rolling? I missed that first part. Uh, so one person, I believe McCall, is doing the ship, and then someone else needs to roll me 2d20 to represent the crew. Okay, so an 11 and a 2, so that has a total of three successes. So you have a bonus momentum. Uh, so your total bonus momentum at the moment is three. Uh, piercing. going to spend that on piercing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So piercing six, you may roll your damage for the IO, which I believe is what seven, eight, eight. Uh, it's yeah. Machine. Okay, so yeah, uh, whoever feels the most lucky. All right, a nine. So uh, with that nine, I'm going to say that the IO swoops in uh, up into close range. It gets up close and personal with Carrier A. Uh, dodges in and out as fire uh, fighters try to take shots at the IO, but. Uh, the Iowa was able to get in close enough to do a strafing run and uh, causes a breach across the dorsal section of Carrier A. Uh, it still has shields, uh, very minimal shielding, but uh, you have done a significant amount of damage to the shield arrays. And with that, we are going to return to the Ophion. So Ophion, what would you like to do? I believe uh, Prior wants to do a scan of some sort. You mean Mito? Yeah. Um, I'm picking up comms traffic, extra comms traffic. Maybe the fighters are tied to the carriers, sir. Well, uh, comms are down right now. No, they, you restored it. Oh, we did? Okay, good. So do I remove that breach? Uh, no, it does not remove the breach, but it does allow you to continue using comms. Okay. So if we focus on the carriers, the uh, theoretically the fighters will stop. Is that what you're saying? That's the running theory, sir. Very good. We'll, we will turn our attention to the carriers then. Um, so should we torpedo the carrier thing? That would be my recommendation, Captain. What uh, modification do you should we do for the torpedoes? So for the torpedoes, uh, they only have high yield. Uh, however, uh, you could fire a salvo, and I believe a salvo either imparts spread or area. I will look it up. Let's see. I think, yeah, it's a, a, a full torpedo spread. It'll be a very threatening action and very aggressive, but it might take out quite a few of those fighters in case they don't check them. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Torpedoes, torpedoes, torpedoes. I just want to know what this... Here it is. Uh, do, do, do. So it would be a total of three threat to fire a salvo, and it would grant the spread effect. So it wouldn't have area, but it would have spread, and spread does half as much damage to that same target. So you could potentially uh, get up to a total of three breaches or more, depending on how well your challenge dice rolls are. And considering they have minimal shields, I think Salvo is definitely going to be what we're going to do. Okay. All right. So that's going to be three threat. And Locke, why don't we have you roll for Shatsu, since she's your girlfriend? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, she is rolling a control and security. She does have a focus. And if someone could get the Ophion's weapons and security, please. The difficulty here is a three. All right, so no help from the ship. Use an extra momentum for a third die for Shatsu. Yes, I will do that. <laughs> okay, very nice. I like this complication. That's oh wow, complication and double crits though, so that's four successes. It is. That's so a lot of momentum. You actually get that momentum back, and I'm going to give you the option. You guys can pay me two momentum, which would bring your total to four. Uh, to get rid of that complication. I, I think it's a good idea, personally. We did just give him three threat. <laughs> Alright, take the momentum to remove that complication, please. Alrighty. So, uh, you are going to be rolling... Uh, Ophion security is a four, Correct. Uh, it says six challenge dice on the sheet, so... Yeah, so, well, what's... Well, security is a three, it says on the sheet. Okay, if it's a three, then yes, six is correct. Uh, but because you are firing a salvo, it is seven. So roll me one more. Okay, so that would I rolled... be... Oh, I rolled seven with that one. Uh, okay, I'll be nice. We'll take your... We'll take uh, Deku's seven. Uh, all right, so are you spending any of your momentum on uh, piercing, uh, on re-rolling anything? Do we have four momentum? Um, pretty good roll. And we got, like, it's additional systems do the effects. So that's a lot of effects. We roll four effects there, so that should definitely hurt. Mm -hmm. All right. Th that's devastating, right? That's two. Uh, no, if you want to, well, let's put it this way. Right now, uh, you guys are doing all of one damage after resistance. So if you want to do damage, you're going to need to spend some momentum on piercing. We can't, we, we can't take the, uh, bonus damage thing. Uh, it's one plus repeatable. A character can increase the damage inflicted by a successful attack, regardless of the type of attack. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it's one momentum for one damage. But if we take spend two points for penetration, we ignore four resistance, which will give us at least will give us eight breach. All right, that sounds better. So we're down to two momentum as we. Okay, so uh, the Ophion under Shatsu's uh, masterful control uh, fires a salvo of orange torpedoes soaring towards Carrier A. And the first torpedo slams into the shields, and then the second one hits, and the shields buckle. And then the third one slams in and causes a breach across the aft section. Uh, the carrier is still up. Uh, it's not having a good day, but uh, you think that if you were to shoot it maybe one or two more times, uh, you would be probably looking at a dead drone. Uh, but the added benefit of this is that because you have inflicted so much damage... Uh, the Carrier A is no longer going to act during this round. How are its shields? Oh, its shields are gone. <laughs> and yeah. So, uh, we're going to move to Carrier B. And for Carrier B, it is going to uh, attempt to move again. So, it's going to spend some power. It's going to move up to six. <laughs> So it's gonna the carrier B is gonna swoop in close to the artificial moon, uh, masterfully dodging the rocks and asteroids that are between it and you, and we'll get to about there, and then they are going to spend some threat to keep the initiative, and they are going to open fire with their phaser or their ah, their disruptor arrays at the Ophion. So let's see what the carrier rolls. All right, well, uh, good news, bad news. The bad news is because of your complication, it is only a difficulty one to hit you. The good news is that they rolled very poorly for damage. So the five damage doesn't even get past your resistance. However, uh, you will suffer one power loss for that effect. Has the Ganymede been taking its turn? 
Uh, the Ganymede is going to act next. So yeah, I believe you guys are now at 14 power, so you're not really in any worry. Uh, as for the Ganymede, uh, let's see. Uh, what would you guys like to do for the Ganymede? I'd say a repeat of what we did with the Io is going to be working pretty well. Yeah. Go for it. So uh, move into close range and fire phaser cannons on their shields. Okay. So I'm going to swoop on in. And yeah, go ahead and uh, one of you roll me a 2d20, please. And the other one, please roll the Ganymede's weapons and security. I got, I got the Ganymede. The... Okay, I'll roll the two. Oh, Pinek already did. Good okay, for so that is two successes. Which is all you really need, but uh, let's see if the ship gets you any momentum. It does. You're up to three momentum. Nice. Uh, what are you using your versatile dice for? I'm assuming piercing, but that's you know what I they say about assuming. I would do piercing. Okay, so that's going to be piercing four, so you will ignore four resistance. If you can now roll me the Ganymede's phaser cannon damage, please. That was how many dice? Eight? Nine I believe the Ganymede has a nine. All right, very nice. nice. So, uh, the Ganymede, showing why uh, you never want to overlook a powerful little vessel like this, swoops in. And much like the IO did, uh, unloads its uh, pulsating phaser cannons onto the carrier B. And can I roll the lawyer for just half a second? You can indeed. Piercing is ignores that amount of damage uh, per effect rolled. Ah, well, that is a very important distinction. So, uh, you will be doing a total of nine damage to the carrier. And yeah, that is enough to open up several breaches in the hull. And the carrier is going to lose a turn. So, uh, because the carrier has just lost a turn and the only ones left in the initiative are the Ophion and it, uh, you guys have two remaining actions. And you have already Open used fire. your tactical. <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, you could fire again, but it would be at increased difficulty. Yeah, I, I could also order like uh, someone to do something. You could, yep. Uh, but what are you guys thinking? Hmm. Station suggestions, people. <laughs> mm. I mean, we're doing pretty well against them. Even with... We ha we could roll with increased difficulty. We do have the extra momentum that we could spend on an additional attack. I could scan... I could scan one of them for weakness. It's... Yeah. Scanning for weakness on the second on carrier B seems like a good idea. It is, um, it is but closer. Yeah. yeah, it is closer, and it is undamaged, so any advantage we have next time we want to attack it would be good. I also have exploit engineering flaw, which is when there's a successful scan for weakness, I can identify uh, engineering flaw. You All can right. also assist that roll. Make it so. Alright. So, for scanning for weakness, uh, just so you know, that uh, because you are at medium range, it will be a difficulty two, and uh, it will be a control science roll, and the ship will assist you with sensor security. So you guys have advanced sensors, so that goes back down to difficulty one. Do have a focus. So that's two successes right off the bat. All right, nice. for the assists is is gravy. Yep. Would so my sensor uh, operations focus apply? Uh, no, so the ship is assisting. Okay, what's that? The sensors... Sensor security. Okay, so you are at four momentum total, but you did successfully scan it for weakness. And so will... our next attack, which is probably the Ophians, not anyone else's, gains the piercing two quality. So we will tear through their resistance. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good, very good. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, also, a key distinction is that if you buy any bonus D20, so if you buy extra dice for the attack, you get to add one challenge die worth of damage for each D20 you purchase. And yeah. So the last person to act in the turn order is going to be Caretaker B. And Caretaker B is going to attempt a Hailing Frequencies Open. 
So, uh, I literally just need to see one success from them. I get one su I even get a threat for it. Uh, so, uh, what you detect on the Ophion is that the carrier uh, broadcasts out a large signal. And immediately you notice that uh, from within the asteroid field directly to the north of Carrier A, a drone ship that you thought was an asteroid powers up. And then, in a similar fashion, one to the south of Carrier B also powers up. And don't worry, I am spending threat for this. Uh, but yeah, you now have two more ships on the field. And yeah, uh, let's do the Ophion's action, and then we will cut to the Amalthea to see what's going on with them. Um... Do you think we should take the increased difficulty in doing the salvo carrier bit? Uh, I, I would think that's a good idea. At least get one of the giant ships off the field before we have to face its younger cousins. Well, we can also was... use phasers. We're close enough for phasers, and then we can spend we can spend some power to really up the the damage. That sounds like a better idea. Yeah. All right, we're going to uh, use phaser or phaser arrays. Or is there a different? There's a difference between arrays and banks in this, right? So arrays, you can nominate the spread or area effect, which, if you nominate spread, is very useful. Because again, spread does half as much damage to a different system. So for NPC ships, that's basically a free extra breach if they don't have shields. Our spread sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. So, because you are using phasers, the difficulty starts as a 2. You are firing again from tactical, so that is a difficulty 3. Uh, you are at medium range, so no increase there. So yeah, Shatsu, if you could roll me a control and security, if someone can get the ship's weapons security. And remember, you do have... The captain, you should probably roll for Shatsu, yeah. since I've already... I've rolled a lot. So. Yeah. That well, looks like... Uh, uh, are we? We're spending uh, one d. We're spending one momentum. If I get to uh, mitigate that difficulty, right? Uh, yeah. You can spend the one momentum to roll an additional die, and because you scanned for weakness, uh, you do get an additional challenge dice damage if you hit. All right. And, and then the, the other two momentum will be for bonus damage, right? If we hit. If you hit. And I also get to assist because of my exploit engineering flaw. Correct. I don't have uh, exploit engineering flaw up, but I think it's what an insight engineering. Uh, sure, that works for me. Sure. All right. So someone needs to roll for Shatsu, and uh, I guess you can do your insight engineering while someone rolls for Shatsu. I can roll Shatsu. All right. Thank you. I was trying to avoid hogging all the cool rolls. Yeah. That was uh, what control engine or control security. Correct. Control security. With the All right, naturally. Three Security, three dice. Okay. Very nice. nice. So you get two momentum. And remember, because you use phasers and versatile two, you have two bonus momentum at the moment. Increased penetration? Oh, yeah. Um, go ahead, what were you saying? Um, I think someone was going to make a phrasing comment, but decided to restrain it at the last second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I think I think what happened is is that Walter's been muted this entire time and hasn't realized it. So. No, I I know I'm muted. I've been putting phrasing in Discord, so I didn't disrupt the stream. Ah. Well, uh, in that case, uh, let's say that you spend your uh, two bonus momentum from versatile on uh, piercing. So, yeah, you have piercing, god, what, six? Depending on how much effects we roll. Yeah. And, and I believe... roll an extra dice because of the engineering flow, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. So, actually, real quick, Jester, uh, normally you would be correct, but it's I just looked it up, and that's why I have the Starship Combat Momentum Spend Table. 
the momentum penetration is flat one res or one momentum for two resistance, but the piercing quality which you have from scan for weakness is two resistance off for every effect. So right now you guys are negating four resistance, and if you have any effects, then you'll negate even more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how many challenge dice? Uh, it's whatever your phaser base is. So for the Ophion, I believe that's a total of eight. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, and then the uh, plus the extra. Plus the extra, so a total of nine. It's n plus one if we decide to spend extra power. Correct. One per power spent. All right. Okay. So Perfect. good news. Uh, you will be able to perform three breaches with this attack. But uh, it will cost you a power, so you will go down to 13 power. But yeah, uh, so the Ophion, uh, as per ordered, Shatsu lines up her shot with the phaser arrays, fires a carrier B, and tears a hole right through the uh, midsection of the, uh, of the hull. Uh, the shields buckle and collapse, and uh, it looks like that Shatsu has done extensive damage to carrier B. Uh, it's a little bit better off than carrier A, uh, but, uh, it's within killing distance, shall we say. And, uh, before we continue this round of combat, let's take a quick break and see what's going on with, uh, the people on the Amalthia. So, uh, obviously Mirthrin is not here today, so anything involving him, I will just NPC. But let us say, for the moment, uh, it is the usual crew minus Mirthrin that is currently in ops, and uh, Gortag, as first officer, would you say that you have a ear to the ground when it comes to crew matters? Sure. I would think that the crew could come to me. Okay. So you're beginning to get anonymous sort of suggestions and comments. Uh, they are unattributed to anyone, but it's not that hard to figure out that these are coming from the Bajoran half. Well, not the Bajoran half. The Bajoran part of your crew. And the gist of the messages you're getting are indicating that the quote-unquote secret that the Marissa have a orb of the prophets is something the Bajorans have great interest in. And they are petitioning that the ship, uh, the Amalthea, and its fleet uh, basically set up some form of defensive zone for the Marissa. Interesting. Uh, I All of these anonymous messages Gortek will uh, reply with, we will take it under advisement, we'll take it under advisement, we'll take it under advisement, and leave... <clears throat> uh, the ones that seem less emotional and more like people bringing up good reasons for it, mm -hmm. not just it's an orb, we need to defend it with our lives type stuff. Um, for the captain and the admiral, uh, being it's probably a decision much above his pay grade. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he would put it in to them that he's hearing these things and they need to be aware of it. Okay. So while Gortex doing that, uh, Rizazo, our lovely Horda friend, uh, as chief of security, I'm curious, uh, how many shifts would your security rotation be? It would match the regular ship because we're on a three shift rotation. No, well, it's an important distinction to make. Are you guys three or four shift? I think three, yeah. Okay. Three so. eight-hour shifts is is decent. Keep everyone rotating and well rested. All right. So, uh, unless Mirthra next week decides otherwise, let's stick with three. So, Rosazo, this is about the time you would normally go off shift, uh, but something on your console has caught your attention. It appears that the Romulans. Uh, which, for the moment, you guys have continued to keep the Romulans on their own ship uh, as you literally rip it apart. And let's just say that you're seeing a general unrest. Uh, your security officers are reporting that the Romulans are getting restless, 
and that some have even made attempts to attack guards. Commander, reporting um, unrest and dissent among Romulans, sword on ship. Uh, we have attacked several uh, uh, guards have been assaulted. Permission to use the fire suppression system on them. Uh, that's actually not a bad idea, Lieutenant. Um, has this report been sent to the Captain and the Admiral yet? Nope, Order this has now. just come up, so it is up to you if you send it off. Very well. Um, yes. Uh, go with your plan of making a lot of wet Romulans. Um, and I will go speak with the Admiral and let him know of your findings. Well, let's just say, for the sake of argument, it's not that hard to find the Admiral, because, lo and behold, he's on his, uh, shall we say, mid-afternoon constitution, and he walks onto the bridge as soon as I find where the hell his token is. There he is. Where is Ca I've been trying to find Captain Merthyr all day. He went down for an in to investigate engineering, and I haven't seen him since. <clears throat> Why do I have a suspicion he's climbing the warp core? I, I believe it is a Jeffrey's tube. <clears throat> Admiral on the, on the bridge! As you were. So I think Admiral. the only one that didn't notice the Admiral was Gorteg and maybe Draval. Uh, Hamasi was already standing and, well, Rizazo can't stand. He's a Horda, so... He's already standing. <laughs> or am I sitting? These or are the are questions standing? that keep us up at night. <laughs> um, Admiral, wonderful. I was actually just coming to try to find you, but it seems you have found me. Commander, and how can I assist you on this fine day? Well, uh, it may not be fine in a moment. In a moment. <clears throat> Uh, Lieutenant Rosazzo has reported that some of the Romulans are very unhappy with their current living situation and have uh, tried to physically attack some of the guards. Sigh. It is hard to maintain discipline when you cannot threaten to imprison someone if they misbehave because they are already in prison. Yes, and it probably doesn't help the morale that we're literally taking their, sh their homes apart around them. How much longer until we finished uh, decommissioning the Romulans' uh, home and we can rebase them? Well, if I would allow Chief Freepak to work around the clock as he would like, uh, it could be done within a matter of a day or two. But I'm restricting him so that way no accidents happen. A wise precaution. Also, we don't really have a place to play to set the Romulans down after this is all over. No. No, we don't. <sighs> Lieutenant R Rizazo, what was your... Uh, what do you have uh, in mind? Uh, no real suggestion other than maintaining discipline. We need some sort of encouragement for good behavior. Some sort of reward... If uh, Horta justice is not human justice, but I have heard movies where prisoners get released. There needs to be some goal, some hope. Has any of the Romulans shown any interest in collaboration? None with Mirthrin. Crew seems very antagonistic. Yes. Vetu has refused to step foot on that ship ever since the Romulan Ale incident. Very well. Let's find the leaders of such, of this uh, um, disestablishment effort and bring them on to the uh, Amalthea's brig. Let's see if we can't split them up and prevent them from communicating. Make the, make it as difficult as possible to organize. Perhaps we could discuss meeting with them and have an arrangement 
a summit, find out what they want. What they want. In order for behavior. What they want is to kill us all, take our fleet, and head home where there will undoubtedly be uh, promote, promoted and receive Heroes of the Empire traits. But I suspect... Let's, uh... He pauses. Yeah, their leadership has proven uncooperative. Maybe if we take their leadership away from them, the, le the less... The lower ranks will prove more cooperative. And with that beeping with sound, yes. uh, Derval... <laughs> it, was, it was actually very nice timing. Uh, Derval, uh, you're noticing that there is an unscheduled and unauthorized launch of a runabout from the Amalthea's main hangar bay. Okay. Uh, Commander, Admiral, I am detecting a launch uh, of the runabout uh, Spirited. I am not. I am unsure who's piloting it. I am attempting to raise communications. Runabout Spirited. This is Amalthea. Please state your intentions. It does not reply. It continues to leave the bay, and unless you put it in a tractor immediately, it will start moving towards the remains, what remains anyway, of the Romulan Warbird. Uh, Gorteg will, uh, if he doesn't do it himself, he will order uh, Darval to um, hook it with the, uh, the tractors, because I'm sure there's something like, on a uh, modern day carrier, the rope that hooks them before they, or the rope cable, whatever you want to call it. I know what you mean. Uh, um, something like that on this too of, you know, if it's zero G, we have some way of pulling a ship back into the bay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys have a multitude of tractor beams that help you with that. Um, but it will be an actual tractor beam task if you want to try and grab it. All right. And before this is Merthrin going all murderous again. <laughs> oh dear alright so uh, whoever is doing the tractor beam this is going to be a control and security I and, it's a tactical job yeah, yeah it is a tactical and the ship is going to be assisting with structure security and the difficulty is a 2 activating tractor beam All right, so that's one success. We need to have someone roll the Amalthea structure and security, and we need to see a success there. Uh, they are performing evasive maneuvers. Where is the Amalthea sheet? There it is. Uh, structure engineering, you got it. Oh, sorry, no, structure security. I can read oh, properly. Stru structure security. English is a hard language. It is. All right, two successes. So yeah, Rosazo, you were able to grab it in a tractor beam. I'm locking out the. I'm locking down the shuttle or the runabout's piloting systems from here, uh, Commander. I'd like to accompany you down to the shuttle bay to see who who is piloting this. This is a blatant disregard of fleet protocol. This was the admiral that said that. Oh no, this is Darval. Oh. Uh... Yes, uh, Darval with me, Rosazzo, uh, also, and bring a security team. Um, Admiral, maybe let the Makos and Commander Drake know? Of course. I guess I have the bridge. Well, I, I've heard you've always wanted another big chair. Oh, this one doesn't fit me all that well. No, and it also doesn't squeak. Not... How did you know about that? Anyways, go see to the runabout pilot. All right. So we cut back to the explosive combat that's going on between the drone ships and the two Callistos and the Ophion. Let me put the turn order back up on the screen. I'll adjust it for you guys on the stream here in a moment. Uh, let's see. So I got to add Littoral B and Littoral A to the combat order. Do. do, do. All right, and their scale is a grand total of four. It's good news is that the Latorals are, uh, you know, smaller than you guys, but uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it is the Ophion's turn first, unless you would prefer the Io or the Ganymede to go before you. I think there's argument to be made for the Io to go and uh, try to take the carrier A out. 
since it's close range, yeah. it's got cannon. I agree with that assessment. Okay. All right, so I was going to use phaser cannons against carrier A again. Okay. So uh, I need one of you to roll me a 2d20, please. And someone else needs to roll the IO's weapons and security. I can do the IO. Uh, if we hit, what do you guys think about spending two momentum on penetration again? Or piercing, sorry. Mm. I mean, it's not a bad play. They are pretty close to damage, so... Getting past as much resistance as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. We so, also... let's see. With a three and a two, you are able to get one momentum for your troubles. And yeah, if you would please roll me your phaser cannon damage for the IO. All right. That's nine, right? Um, eight. Eight for the IO. Okay. Nine for the Ganymede. Okay. So, uh, my question to you is, would you be aiming to destroy or simply to disable? I'm all for d just destroying this one outright and seeing what, it, what effect its destruction has on the fighters. There are no living... We detect no living signatures aboard them, right? No Correct. living signatures, no. All right, then I'll give the go-ahead to destroy. Okay. So the IO, uh, as, as they say, an eye for an eye, uh, again unleashes a torrent of orange phaser fire onto Carrier A, and the carrier begins to buckle and list to the side as cascading explosions across the hull uh, co uh, combine, and eventually it goes up in a great fireball. And Carrier A is no more. However, uh, it is now going to be Littoral A's turn, and unfortunately for the IO, uh, Littoral A is within striking distance with its phasers. So, let's see what happens. Well, uh, apparently it is not the Littoral's day, because they have rolled a complication. Uh, I'm going to keep whatever that complication is as a secret, but needless to say, nothing happens. Like, they don't even fire, just nothing happens. Uh, but it is now uh, either the Ophion's or the Ganymede's turn, whichever one you would prefer. The uh, uh, quick question: What happened to the fighters that were attacked that were launched from Carrier A when it destroyed? Ah, right. Sorry. Uh, so when the Carrier A's when Carrier A went up, all of the fighters that were attached to it immediately went dead in space. Like, they just completely, like, someone cut the cords of a puppet. What were you going to suggest, Locke? Um, well, the Ophion's still in phaser range, and we have a lot more actions. We could just put a ton of power into a really con concentrated phaser burst, and then when our turn comes up again, we could restore power. Yeah, sounds good to me. Make it so. And then, then we could use the Ganymede to go harass the uh, that littoral B. Okay. So, uh, I did look it up. You guys do need to declare how much power you would be dumping into this attack before it hits. Which makes sense, because, you know, it's, it's a little bit meta to spend the power after the fact. So... And what, um, go ahead. How much can we get back, like... Uh, Generally speaking, how much can we get back with a restore power roll? Or is that a challenge dice roll? Uh, well, uh, there's two ways to get back power. Uh, actually, there's one that I know off the top of my head. Uh, the first is that you have to do a power management task, which is a daring or control engineering at difficulty two. And unless you have a talent that says otherwise, you get one point of power and then one point of power per momentum spent. Now, if you had, uh, I believe it's improved EPS as a ship talent, that becomes a total of three uh, momentum, or not three momentum, a total of three power. But needless to say, uh, it is a little bit difficult to get power back unless you have appropriate talents. It's a reason engineering task on the sheet. It should be daring or control engineering for power management. I don't know what you cheated in it is, yeah. 
I mean, I'm good with all three of those, so... Daring or control. So, if we could easily spend two power, that'll give us a fair amount, and then, or even three, and that would... Yeah, I'd say three, bring us to an even ten power left over. Sounds okay. good, and then on subsequent rounds, I can um, restore power and get some of it back. Right, so three power into this phaser assault. Okay, that's going to be three additional challenge dice, but you still need to make the attack. If you can roll me a weapons and security for the ship, and Shatsu is rolling a uh, control security for herself. All right, very good ship roll. I'll get Shatsu if no one else is. I'll we kind of assume that was your duty. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy a third dice with momentum. Okay, momentum. brings you down to four momentum. Oh, gosh darn it. Well, I mean, it's, you know, difficulty two to hit, so you get that momentum right back. And zero, zero, one. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's not great. But hey, you hit. That's what matters. Hit. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I believe your grand total number of challenge dice is 11 here. Yeah. Oh. So I'm guessing you guys are going to be doing the same thing to Carrier B that you did to Carrier A. Uh, you mean open heart surgery at this point? Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Shatsu, uh, given the go ahead to be as merciless as she can, uh, this time when the phaser uh, strikes out towards Carrier B, uh, unlike Carrier A, where it was sort of like a cascading explosion, this time the phaser burst literally bifurcates the carrier. And as the two halves of the ship sort of list and fall apart from one another, there is a series of double explosions as they go up into debris. So the carriers are down. Like, the, the carriers are all off the field at this point. And the good news is that with that, any fighters that were on the field also go dead in the water. Um, however, it is now going to be Littoral B's turn. And for Littoral B... Uh, it is going to, well, first check ranges. Yes. Uh, it is going to, from the safety of the asteroid field, is going to fire on the Ganymede. So, let's see what the Lortoral does. It does indeed hit. Uh, and if I am correct in remembering properly, the Ganymede does uh, have the Ablate of Armor, yes? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Really? Did we not give Ablative to any of them? Hmm. Uh, okay, so I believe that is a resistance three for you. There is another escort back at, at base, right? Yeah, there's two more Callistos back home, but... It could have been one of them. No, it would have been either the Io or the Ganymede that would have had it. Either way, it's it's not super important. Well, I guess it is, but you know what I mean. Uh, so six damage, minus three. It's three damage to your shields. But uh, because it's dampening, you also lose two power, but we're not tracking power on the Ganymede, so don't even worry about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, the sort of purplish hue disruptor fires out towards the Ganymede and strikes its shields, but it's a glancing blow. It maybe draws a little bit more power as the shields compensate, but everything else is fine. And it is now either the Ganymede's or the Ophion's turn. Uh, do you guys want to shoot with the Ganymede again, or do you want me to restore power? Let's be a still 10 power, so then we, if we take out the Littoral, then... Okay, then yeah, have the Ganymede shoot, and hopefully it'll take it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, have it move a bit closer and use cannons. Okay. Is it, is it able to do that in one turn? I will say it is, because that's how we're, we're dealing with the Ganymede, is they have one total turn in the round. Uh, but, uh, just so you know, if you go within that green aura, uh, you must make me a difficulty two, uh, daring and con, or you may suffer damage to your shields and possibly to your ship. Uh, the benefit, though, of being in the green aura is that you gain an additional two challenge die worth of resistance. Hmm. The Ganymede also has phaser arrays, so yeah, you can shoot from where thinking. it is. Yeah, yeah use the, the phaser arrays on it, and we can... I, I, we're not tracking power on that, so it can't really add power to their damage. Correct. Yeah, shoot where they are. Or maybe move them down to M17. 
Okay. Well, uh, I think you know what you need to do then if you're firing. Yep. I need someone to do 2d20, and I need someone to do weapons and security yep. for the Ganymede. All right, there's the Ganymede. One success from the Ganymede. All right, and then someone just 2d20, please, and your target number is a 13. Oops. Wow, very nice. So, yeah, you both got both of you guys got crits. Um, so we'll, we'll take the 12 and the 1, because it was first. Uh, so that is going to be a grand total of, I can math today, two momentum. So you have yep. one floating, and you did hit with phaser arrays, so you have basically three momentum to spend on whatever. I would dump it all into piercing to get rid of the resistance. Okay. Right. That's in, the, in that asteroid field, definitely. Okay, mm -hmm. so yep. it will be uh, six resistance off the top, but go ahead and uh, roll your damage. Uh, that's... Okay, so nine. Uh, I'm going to roll the two challenge dice worth and see if it uh, does anything. Yep, it's not enough. So you are, in fact, able to strike Littoral B. So the Ganymede uh, angles itself so that it can get a clear shot on Littoral B through the rocks. And sure enough, when it fires its phasers, uh, it masterfully dodges every bit of debris between it and Littoral B and... Does a heavy blow to the uh, ship's, the caretaker drone shields, and uh, effectively uh, causes uh, one breach. Well, let me ask this. Uh, remember, you can add area or spread to your attack. Would you like to make it a spread? Yes. <laughs> All right. So in the future, I'm going to be a little bit more stringent about that. You must declare area or spread beforehand. But for this argue for this round, we'll say. Uh, you are able to affect the spread, which means uh, you cause just enough breaches to not only disable the Littoral B shields, but you leave it almost dead in the water. Uh, it literally looks like you could walk out and just kick it and it would fall apart. Uh, but for sake of argument, Littoral B has lost all actions in this round. Very good shooting. Mm hmm and then, uh, because it is the enemy's turn, uh, Littoral A is actually going to attempt something a little bit odd. Uh, it is going to fire torpedoes at the IO. Now, it's not an optimal attack, so it is a, uh, a difficulty four, uh, but there is a reason for this. Okay. So... What's going to happen is that when the uh, sh drone ship fires the torpedo, it misses the IO. However, it explodes in uh, J14. So, you know, two squares behind where the IO is. And when it does, I'm going to be spending my remaining threat, all of it, to say that as it explodes, the resulting shockwave, you know, passes harmlessly over you guys. But when the shockwave touches the moon, the moon literally begins to open up almost like a shell or an orb uh opening up and revealing its contents and inside your sensors are detecting not one not two not three not four but a grand total of 12 carrier vessels that are beginning to power up and that's where Son we're going to take our break so bitch. if uh you guys could be back here in uh no more than 10 minutes and remember, I do leave the stream going. But yeah, this is where we'll take our break. Twelve! Twelve of them! BRB. All torpedoes. Let's go!
And I'm back. So, uh, for you podcast listeners, oh, welcome back. Uh, for you podcast listeners out there, uh, hopefully the whole iTunes and Podbean thing is uh, working out. And of course, uh, if you have any suggestions or comments or concerns about the audio only version, uh, you know, send them to my email or tweet me and we'll see what we can do. Uh, honestly, this is like my first time actually just doing uh, podcasts in any form. So. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure I'm bound to overlook something. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully the audio version's working out. And of course, anyone watching on Twitch or YouTube, thank you so much for watching there as well. Uh, but yeah, just sort of waiting on these guys to come back at this point. I guess I could make a quick macro while I wait so that we don't have to worry about that. Let's see. Is this the uh, screw Ophion over macro you're making? Nah, this is the uh, Callisto roll. Uh, Callisto rolls, there we go. Uh, no, this is so that we don't have to keep typing in the 2D20. We can just uh, hit the macro and we should be good. I guess it would help if I made it visible to all players. There we go. All right, you guys should have a new macro that you could put on your bar. So I think we're all in agreement. Do not activate the second moon, right? <laughs> well, if you remember what I said, there are 12 of these things in the system. So this system is basically, literally, a stronghold for them, mm -hmm. it seems like. Yikes. And we went in with just the Ophion. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, then he's just... I guess I can set up this scene too while we wait. I'm back. Welcome back. Dylan break. Am I late? Nope, you got uh, four minutes. Just, uh, I think we're just waiting on uh, Walter and McCall. I think they're the only ones that aren't here yet.
Welcome back. Oh, I still got time. Good. Yep. You still got like two minutes. Oh, uh, for those of you on the stream at the moment, how's the level with the uh, ambient beeping and engine noise? Is it too low? Is it too loud? Is it just right? Probably should have asked that earlier, but... It's okay for me. Cool. One more minute before we're back. So, uh, I think what we'll do here is uh, we'll start the scene. Let me put us back on the right screen. We'll start the scene, uh, and hopefully McCall will join us uh, shortly. Oh, I'm back. Of, speak of the devil, and he appears. Where? Have you seen him? Wow. Does it look like my ex? I mean, probably. I don't I don't know what your ex looks like. But... Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, both uh, Commander Gorteg and Lieutenant Derval, uh, you guys have gone down to the hangar bay one of them anyway and we saw Zobi there as well as yeah you can be there as well let me throw you on there there you go that it was ordered that's why okay no that's okay i just forgot to throw you on there uh so rosazo uh relevant for you uh how much of a security response would you have made ready for this runabout to come back in say well it's probably only one person so like two red shirts probably seems enough okay so one life sign and not like a dozen let's say that for some reason you're unable to scan within the runabout at the moment so you do not know how many life signs are within All right so yeah yeah let's say two red shirts for now with more kind of on standby okay so your two red shirts are standing by uh near the uh, entryway into the runabout uh, as you, the three of you approach uh, one of them turns and says ah, uh, Chief of Security, hello uh, we've been unable to open the runabout, apparently whoever's inside locked it up pretty damn tight a highly unusual reaction <laughs> very, has anybody tried command codes to open it? Uh, we've tried some of the emergency overrides, sir, and unfortunately it, looks, it seems to be that they have engaged the manual lockout. We can cut through it with a phaser, sir. It would just take some time. Uh, just to let you know, there are cutting tools in the core yeah. rulebook and operation that may help. And we're on the ship, so you kind of don't need opportunity to get them, I think. Yeah, you literally, it, it would just take maybe minutes to open it. So do we think it would be slower or faster for me to, like melt through with acid. I you just want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I kind of do, yeah. Um, I would say it would probably take, I don't know, maybe another Compar 15 minutes, but you could do it. Right, just 
Grab the cutting tools. That would be I mean, I, I suddenly had the mental image of Rizazo just dropping in from a hole in the ceiling and be like, hi there. Yeah. Dropping in, rope kind of somehow <laughs> spinning there with phasers drawn. Oh, dear. All right, but cutting yeah. tools? Cutting tools. Cutting tools. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, the uh, red shirts begin cutting. And after a moment, uh, they step back from the work and say, we're ready to open her up whenever you are, sirs. Um, Gortek will he'll yeah. draw his type 2 uh, but he will listen to Rizazo and step behind him okay I, yeah trigger the door to open okay so when you open the door uh, you see that inside is quite a number of people like it looks like someone has packed this runabout to capacity and every single one of them is a Bajoran. Hmm. They're all officers? Uh, they are not currently wearing any Starfleet uniforms. This looks to be uh, almost like your civilian contingent. Because remember, you're a large enough ship on the Amalthea that you have... Uh, non-officers and non-enlisted aboard. Yeah, families and yeah, families. Uh, you know, passers-by. You know, there there's non-Starfleet on this ship. Gortek is just gonna like lowly growl. <sighs> Out. So, uh, just so you guys have someone to focus your ire on. I'm trying to find my Bajoran token here, but uh, we'll say one of them uh, steps forward, and uh, I think it's probably safe to say you know a Bajoran Vedic when you see one. And uh, what uh, what was his name going to be? It's here in my notes somewhere. Uh, let's just say he doesn't have a name for a moment. He has introduced himself, because I can't find it in my notes. Uh, but he, you know, he steps out uh, before anyone else does. And since you are seem to be in charge and probably the largest individual there, uh, the Vedic comes up to you, Gortag, and says, May I help you, Commander? Yes. You can help me by coming along quietly to the brig until I can have the Admiral come and speak with you about stealing Starfleet property was not stealing. We had every intent to return your runabout to you once we had landed on the World of the Prophets. Yes, but you did not ask. Therefore, you took without permission. Therefore, stealing. Permission to move them all to the brig? No. I don't think they will try this again. And I'll look at the, the Vedic until at least the Vedic has spoken with the Admiral. Am I correct? I see no need to discuss matters with your admiral. I think it is fairly obvious. We have found, by the prophet's goodwill, we have found a world. And that world is one we must colonize. Have you done any research whatsoever about this world? We have heard it is a veritable paradise, almost like that of Ryza. Yes, except there's no land. It's all underwater. And the last time I checked, Bajorans can't breathe underwater. No, but we have the technology to deal with such. Underwater colonies are not exactly commonplace, yes, but it is possible to construct such things. Well... That's not going to happen until at least you talk to the person in charge of this fleet that is with you. So, I would ask that you tell your people to go back to their quarters and you can have a conversation with the Admiral. He uh, turns to his people and says... Remain here, unless they take you by force. I will go chat with this Admiral. Commander, permission to take them by force. 
Gortek will smile. Razazo, you are reading my mind, but as for now, how about you keep them in that runabout? I'm very curious at how. How did you per, how did you uh, board this uh, runabout and take it without any Starfleet officers uh, interfering with your business? You must have you've bypassed at least three different checkpoints, including flight deck officer Sona, shuttle chiefs, and probably at least a few maintenance workers that are around here. Vedic simply smiles and says, "When it comes to enacting the Prophet's will, none can stand in the way." Mm. Commander, I must ask I must make the request that we increase uh, security presence in the shuttle base for, to prevent future m uh, larking about mm. That would be a wise decision, Lieutenant especially seeing as how we might have more guests soon Lieutenant should... Rosazzo please keep the Bajorans inside this shuttlecraft um, and he'll turn to the two red shirts. Uh, Jenkins. Shit. <laughs> that was the first name that popped in my head. It is pronounced mm. Shaheed. Uh, yes. <laughs> Please escort the Vedic to the Admiral's office. Understand. And I call for more security guards to kind of maintain a presence in and around the run boats. And, and uh, some, uh, engineers to disable them. Uh, yeah. And Gortek, look at Rizazo. You're in charge of the uh, this shuttle bay until as such time as we tell you to let them back to their quarters. Understood? Understood. Darval, if you'll come with me while we take the Vedic to the Admiral. Yes, Commander. And I will um, uh, hit my column and basically warn Cam that we're coming in to let the Admiral know. All right. So, uh, not to leave out Prier, I do actually have something planned for Medical Bay this uh, today. Good news is that Jensen's not actually there. I just haven't gotten rid of his token. All right. So, uh, let me... <laughs> there we go. You should now be in the sick bay. Uh, so, Prier, it's, you know, fairly average day. Uh You've pretty much just discharged your last uh, major patient that had been injured in the whole, you know, being thrown out of the wormhole and breaches everywhere. And things had finally calmed down. And, you know, you're reading through your usual reports. Uh, any patients that have been in here for long-term care prior to the whole wormhole incident. When uh, I'd like you to roll me a insight medicine, please. Uh, difficulty one. Would any of my focuses apply? Do you have virology, or virology, infectious diseases, or anything that would involve viruses? I have infectious diseases. All right, that'll apply. Okay. Wow. Uh, I'm going to say that this will succeed at cost, but I will take some threat. Uh, yes, Prier, uh, as you're reading through your reports, you realize that, strangely... There is an uptick in Rigelian flu uh, across the fleet. Now, normally, you know, Rigelian flu isn't all that bad, but if I remember my trek properly, uh, you need something very special to treat it. And I'm going to get you the name of that very quickly. I just have to find it either in my notes or on Memory Alpha. Of course, if one of you beats me to it, by all means. Let's see. It might not even be Rigelian. Is it Rigelian fever that I'm thinking of? That sounds closer. Uh, uh, yes, this is it. Because it, you need Rytalin. I remember this episode, yes. So it is Rigelian fever. And the only known cure, even to this day, is Rytalin. And you have, you know had enough to treat what you've seen so far but if this plague continues to spread you're gonna run out of right talent very quickly this is not good um 
I don't remember. Can you synthesize Ritalin? To my knowledge, no. You must find natural deposits of it. Um, I will come up to Ops. Okay. Uh, prayer to Ops. So, uh, because uh, Darval and Gorteg are currently escorting the Bajoran, and Rizazo is staying in the shuttle bay, I think the ranking officer is uh, actually Admiral Skull, because he hasn't been told to go to his office yet. Uh, this is Acting Ops Officer Admiral Skull here. Can, how can I help you? Well, hello, Admiral. I haven't talked to you here in a bit. Um... We could have a big problem on our hands here very soon. Well, that's just one more for the pile. What is this? Uh, what problem does this uh, form? Uh, what form does this problem take? Infectious disease, Rogelian fever. Fever. I don't know the specifics, but that doesn't sound like a very good thing to have running amok. That's one of those diseases that needs one of those special, unreplicatable cures, isn't it? Unfortunately. Ah, oh, great. So far we've had enough um, Ritalin to keep up with what the cases that have come in. However, we should probably start looking for deposits here near in the near future. Understandable. Uh, please make uh, Captain Beckett of the Lice and uh, Chief Hylong aware. And they could put their uh, stellar cartography to some use, finding some, hopefully. All right, will do. I want to make you guys aware. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Commander. Not a problem. Prayer out. In prayer, or as you. Start to, you know, make the call to Beckett and Hylong, your favorite lieutenant does walk in. And he's actually sporting a very nasty laceration uh, up his left forearm. He is bleeding J profusely. Jensen, what did you do? I, I was just kayaking on the holodeck. I thought we said no more holodeck. I, eh, eh. He just motions at his arm and makes noises. <laughs> oh, Jensen. Uh, and while you deal with Jensen, we cut back to the Ophion. So, uh, as has been described, uh, when the torpedo uh, detonated harmlessly, uh, apparently something about uh, how the torpedo worked was enough to trigger a response from the artificial moon. And the moon opened up like an orb and showed you within was a cornucopia of other drone vessels. So, what would you like to do? Uh, it is the Ophion's turn. What type of drones are these? So, these are, if, you know, using crew designations, uh, there are at least 12 carrier types. There's probably about 10 to 15 littorals, and then a very large number that you really don't want to know of the smaller, like, scale to, like, runabout size drones. Are they all activating, or are they just, like, faces? It, uh, it appears that the carriers are beginning to power up, yes. Um, May I make a suggestion, Captain? I'm open ears. Fire torpedoes in the opening, I, I was going to make the sug suggestion if all those ships are in that tiny little space right there, uh, barrage of torpedoes would probably do a pretty good amount of damage. And if they're just now powering up, they might not have shields. Very well. Uh, disperse all available torpedoes and have the IO and Ganymede do the same. And then regroup because if this does not work, I want us leaving the system as soon as possible. Okay. So, uh, let us say, for sake of argument, you don't need to make a roll here to hit, but I need to say... How do I want to say this? So, you're firing all available torpedoes? You're firing a salvo we, of torpedoes? We can't we replace the torpedoes we use, Captain. Was that something he came up with? Because I thought he said he wanted to 
to uh, not go that direction with the torpedoes like Voyager. I don't want to track, you know, all torpedoes, but this is one of those distinctions where if you unload all of your torpedoes, we will note that. But okay, otherwise, so it's... we don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. the, the Ganymede has quantum torpedoes. It does. Right, so the Ganymede's going to be shooting its quantums. Io will be shooting a complement of its... Let's go with a standard salvo with area. Okay. So, I need someone to roll for Io. I need someone to roll for Ganymede. And I need somebody to roll for Ophion. You're going to be just rolling your um, your torpedo damage, but plus one because it's a salvo. So, for the Ganymede, I think that's, what, a four plus a... Uh, nine. Yes, yeah, so that's a nine point. vicious yeah. one for the Ganymede. Uh, it's a eight for the <clears throat> IO, and a I believe it's also a uh, no, it's a seven for the Ophion. I'll roll the IO. Okay, I got the Ganymede. Okay, so seven, uh, so four for the Ophion, the three for the IO, and ten for the Ganymede. Can I spend a momentum to re-roll? You certainly may. And you can as well, Panek. Uh, sure, I'll spend a momentum reroll one. Well, you can reroll as many of those zeros as you wish. Oh, okay. Oh, that's better. Definitely better. So that's uh three. Seven plus three for me. Yep. So ten for you. Ten, eleven for the Ganymede, and what is that for the Ophion? Seven. Yeah, it looks like seven. All right. So. Uh, sure enough, with all of you concentrating fire uh, through that opening, uh, you know, torpedoes are a, a very explosive, uh, pardon the pun, uh, a very explosive solution to many problems. And firing that many torpedoes in that confined of a space, including quantums, is definitely enough that the moon itself cracks. And it just... It's, it's almost like volcanoes erupting on the surface. Just the interior ex explosions just rip open the moon and send debris and metal flying everywhere. Um, now, the downside to this, while you have destroyed the moon, the downside is that the Io is within that aura of effect. So, mm -hmm. I need the Io to roll me a Daring and Con... So there's a new macro for the Callisto classes. Uh, if one of you could hit that for me, please. The difficulty here is a two. I've oh, got it up. Uh, All right, yeah, just go ahead and, uh, okay. Really wish someone else would have rolled that, okay. <laughs> I mean, we have I'll... momentum to re-roll if we wish. Uh, no, you okay. would have to spend your determination to re-roll that, but they're Callisto classes, so at the moment we don't have any named characters, which means they cannot re-roll. Ah. Um, so, good news, bad news, good news, uh, I'm going to be rolling some challenge dice here, so I don't think the IO is going to be destroyed outright, uh, however, there's going to be a lot of damage. So, let's see what happens. Um, the IO only has two shields. Yeah, the IO only has two shields. So, let's say with zero successes that the total damage, the total number of challenge dice is 16. Oof. Okay. So, what that's going to do is the Io is just battered by uh, flying shrapnel and other sorts of bits of debris. Uh, the pilot uh, at the helm does his damnedest to, to you know, skirt it and otherwise save the Io, uh, but he's only able to do so much. And what happens is, is the Io is flung over here, and I need the Io to take some breaches for me. So, uh, I'm going to be rolling six breaches for the IO. So, let's see what happens. So, breach number one to weapons. Breach number two to structure. Breach number three also to structure. So, this is very important. If a certain number of structure is rolled, this could be bad. 
One to engines. Two to weapons. And okay, so that's an even spread. That's two to engines, two to weapons, and two to structure. So the IO is just, it's almost, it's not quite Swiss cheese, but it's getting there. It's, it's very holy at the moment. And uh, the main power flow has been knocked offline. It is something that could be repaired with time. But uh, if you want to get out of here, you probably are going to have to track to her at a system. And yeah, I'll say that that is the whole Ophion's turn. And we're just going to reset the initiative order so that everybody can go again. Um, so let's say that for sake of argument, the IO is currently disabled and does not get a turn, but it is the Ophion's turn to act. Or the Ganymedes, if you would prefer. What I'd like is for the Ophion to kind of uh, swoop in along F14 and E13 to get in between, to get close enough to the littoral to start making phaser shots uh, and kind of provide a little bit of cover for the IO. And maybe maybe in another turn, when it comes down to the Ophion, we kind of repulse or tractor beam it away from us, kind of get it some more distance. Okay. Uh, so what that's going to be is uh, if you're moving, that is a control plus con. Mm, excuse me. Uh, that is a control plus con for whoever's moving the ship, and the ship is assisting with engines con. And the difficulty is a zero. So, well, no, I did say there was a lot of debris, so let's make the difficulty a two. So you, you could get momentum here, but you could also take some shield damage. All right. So who among the officer corps is going to be doing the uh, helm task? I can do it if no one else wants to. I'm shooting for a 14 with control con. I think you're probably the highest then. Okay, you get the two successes that you need. So yeah, you uh, move in to uh, cover the IO. It's a little bit tricky based on the, the fact that there's moon bits everywhere, but, you know, uh, Mito manages masterfully. Oh, alliteration. Uh, but I do need to know if you guys are retaining the initiative or no. What do you guys think? I say no for now. Let's, let's see what they do. Indeed. All right. I don't think it's needed. Okay. So, uh, Littoral A is going to see that uh, it has a juicy new target. It's very simple. You know, it, it sees a target, it shoots. So, let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, so, you guys have, what, five resistance, seven resistance? Uh, I believe it's seven. Yeah, you guys have a blade yeah. of armor, so you are at seven. So... The phaser, the sorry, the disruptor that hits you, uh, doesn't even get past resistance, but you do lose two power. So I believe you're down to eight. And yeah, uh, I'm going to keep the initiative by spending some threat, and uh, Littoral B is going to fire its disruptors at the Ganymede. All right, so the Ganymede is going to be taking three damage and will suffer some power loss, but uh, my understanding is its shields are still up. All right, so would you prefer the Ganymede to go next or the Ophion? The Toro B is almost dead, so if the Ganymede goes, it'll be taking it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. All right. Uh, phaser, another phaser array. Uh, any modifications or power you want to spend on that? Well, remember, oh, you we can't, can't spend do power. That. That's right. Yeah. Um, can we make it a high yield? Uh, no. You no. could fire Sorry, your quantums and make it high yield. But we're uh, the last time we fire. Last time our torpedo went off in the vicinity of the was about right. to disgorge a lot more vessels. I'm all for not doing that. Uh, so, we can spend the momentum on penetration, though. Yeah. 
Penetration's yeah, good. Uh, no spend. Looking, uh, looking at distances here, uh, I'm just going to point out that uh, you are at long range of littoral A. Uh, you are at medium of littoral B. So just remember your optimal weapon ranges. So we could get a little bit closer, say to here. Um, yeah. And then you know, to, yeah, right there. And then yeah. we should be close enough to phaser cannon them Indeed. right up the wazoo. Right up the wazoo. I'm good at that. All right. Okay, so go ahead and roll me uh, the Ganymede's uh, weapons, please. Weapon security for them, and if someone just wants to hit the macro for the Callistos. I can do the macro. Oop, never mind. Oop, no. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, with uh, the amount of shrapnel in the area, uh, the Ganymede is unable to get a good firing solution on Littoral B, and uh, its shots go wide. And uh, that means we come back around to Littoral A, and as I said, they're very simple drones. They see a target, they shoot. Okay. So, uh, Ophion, again, you take no damage, but you do suffer one power. So I believe you are now down to seven power. <clears throat> and it is now the Ophion's turn. You want me to try to get the power back? I think that's wise. Yeah, I mean, they had their... They're really not doing any damage to us, so, yeah. I mean, at this point, the damage we're taking from them is our power. Exactly. So, okay. Uh, I will, uh, Cranston will attempt to restore power. Okay, so that's either a daring or control plus engineering. A difficulty two. Uh, I will do control and engineering, and I will spend one momentum uh, to help me with the initial roll. Okay. So you're at three momentum. Um, and I do have a focus with Starship Power Systems. Definitely would apply. Nice. Nice. So you get a momentum. And uh, by default, you restore one power. Uh, how much momentum would you be spending on additional power? So we get one back, which will take us from seven to eight. Um... I will spend two momentum to take us back up to ten. Okay, so I believe total momentum-wise, you guys are at a two. Yep. Alrighty. So, uh, Cranston, you do what engineers do, and you pull power from somewhere that doesn't need it at the moment, and power resurges to the Ophion. Uh, with that said, though, we are going to cut to the Admiral's meeting room. So, let me find... There we go. There's the Amalthea's office. So, uh, Drake, you're not there. Uh, but, Admiral, you've gotten a call from uh, Commander Cam to meet in your office. You have someone waiting for you. And uh, when you arrive, Skull, uh, there is at least the Vedic. Uh, I'm curious if Gorteg and Duvall would have stayed behind. Darval probably not, because... It's not really his interest, and also I don't want to talk to myself, so... Fair. Uh, would Gorteg have stayed behind? Well, well, crap, I was going to order Darval to stay behind, so that way <laughs> McCall had to talk to himself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, after I, after Gorteg will bring the Vedican, uh, hand a pad with the report on it, uh, I don't think Gorteg needs to stay, but I'll stay in the office just so that way McCall doesn't have to talk to yeah. Okay. So yeah, Skull, uh, you get the report. You are up to date on the whole situation. Uh, Vedic Parb, you are you are charged with stealing star stealing Starfleet property and as and coercing twelve other s uh, non Starfleet officers, Bajoran, to fly with you to the Marissa world to set up a new colony all because of rumors of an orb am I correct in this? it was my understanding that they are now rumors if it is depending on whether or not the Bajoran orb is or is not a rumor is not does not excuse this type of behavior we are currently facing enough problems with our current fleet disposition. I do not wish for 
uh, on a gr group of uh, individuals to go rogue. That's Vedic. I understand your strong religious drive to seek out this orb and potentially uh, follow whatever it whatever your religion uh, deems necessary. But you could have at least asked me. Would you have asked... said yes? What I would have done is I would have... Uh, and what I'm currently in the process of doing is negotiating at least orbital rights and limited visitation to the planet with the ambassador of this planet. And investigating the weather investigating the nature of this rumored orb and if this orb is a is indeed a thing i would have at least asked if it would be possible to share its experience with the members of the members of this fleet that were interested in seeing it however you've now made this a lot more difficult for me because now i know that the closer we get to this planet more likely it is you're going to attempt something similar Oh, then I believe your only solution is to let us go. That's an awfully narrow-minded and uh, selfish only solution. I have a couple different solutions in mind. The first is I could lock you in the brig for 30 days, as would be my right as a Starfleet officer attempting to steal Starfleet property. And yes, I'm aware in the report that you had full intentions to return it once your pilgrimage was complete, but that's still theft, and, and that's why I'm only giving you the 30 days rather than the five months. So is this how the fleet is going to react? That when it comes to religious matters, if we don't agree with yours, you lock us in the bridge for th or the, the bridge, the brig for 30 days? No, the, how the fleet is... This is how the fleet reacts when individuals decide to take matters into their own hands and steal Starfleet property on go on whatever willy-nilly quest they deem appropriate. I would have charged Garrick the, the same the same penalty if he decided to take a runabout to investigate a nearby moon because he thought that it had a, its materials might lend well to his uh, new fashion line. Somewhere on the promenade, Garrick looks around as if someone's talking about him. And given that he's probably placed three different listening bugs in my office, I'm probably not far off the truth. Mm. Anyways, Vedic, I do have full respect for your religion and your beliefs, and I'm not... And I am... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm very sympathetic to them. After all, it cannot be a coincidence that the prophets decided to send us here when the whole wormhole calamity happened. However, and I, I fully understand your desire to make sense of this all. Believe me, I'm trying to make sense of it too. However, the it's very difficult when a group of of individuals decide to take matters into their own hands and you as a Vedic must uh, must understand and have probably encountered it when various radical sects of Joran faith decide to um, take uh, interpret their religion differently than what the Vedic and the Vedic assembly believe. well Let's just say this, Admiral. As the current ranking religious leader, as you put it, for the Bajorans, incarcerating me would have a, shall we say, undesirable outcome. Oh, yes. I have no intention of making you a martyr, Vedic. The... So what I'd like to do is to reach some sort of agreement with you. If if the uh, the Amalthea is currently en route to the Mar what was it the Marissa 
Uh, I don't think I've actually ever told you what the Marissa call their planet. So aside from Atlantis, uh, well, you do know their uh, their planet is or not their planet. Their city is named Atlantis. Uh, but I suppose you did have the uh, the ambassador with you. Yeah. So let me pull up my quick notes here. Uh, it is called uh, da, 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 uh, Suthia, and I will put it in chat so you know how to spell it. Suthia. So, Suthia. Vedic, um, what I the uh, Amalthea and its fleet are making progress towards the world of Suthia, at which point I will begin diplomatic negotiations with the Queen. If I'm able to verify that the orb is present, I will negotiate access to the orb for you to start with. If that is an acceptable solution, we will, and the Queen accepts such visitation then we can see about uh, sharing this ex the uh, orb experience with the rest of your I, and he does pause as he tries to figure out the best word your flock very well admiral I believe this is the best compromise given the situation I shall return to my people and have them return to their homes yes I'm I am pleased to have made your acquaintance Vedic. I wish that it had been under less strenuous circumstances. And I'm going to make a mental note to make my make more contact with uh, the with the non-Starfleet officers uh, and try to. I do I do wish to serve the interests of all citizens on this fleet and not just Starfleet, even if. We are the ones currently running the ships you call home. All right. So, uh, you know, Vedic makes to leave, and unless any of you stop him, he simply nope. says good day and departs. Um, I'll call Commander Cam into my office real quick. Okay. So Cam comes in and says, Well, that was uh, tense. Yes, but... I've stared down a potentially armed quantum torpedo on at least two occasions. A religious natures are about as explosive. Hmm. Anyways, uh, Commander Cam, I'd like to set up a sort of a town hall meetings with the civilian portions of the government of these the civilian portions of our fleet within the next couple weeks. After I've preferably after I've made first contact with the uh, Queen of Atlantis, I'd like to start um, making quelling any potential disruptions that may pop up as our fleet continues to figure out where the hell we are. I can certainly do that, sir. Uh, would you prefer to meet in an arboretum or perhaps somewhere on the promenade? Yes. I think the arboretum would be a nice, relaxing. Pl um, place. The promenade is a little busy for my taste. Very good. I will make it so. Anything you wish to add, Commander? Hmm. No, Admiral. I, uh, I think you handled the situation well. If, uh, and I believe the Arboretum is a better choice as it was probably provide less security risks than the promenade or the boulevard um and i feel that uh maybe lieutenant darval and i could move our daily runs in a more public place let the civilian population know that we are out and about i think is the right way of saying it agreed i think we should also figure out uh civilian outreach programs and potentially a couple of lies and officers. Mm. I'll, work, I'll figure that out in time. I'll add that to my list of things for Skull to do. Yes, and perhaps not talking about himself in the third person, Admiral. <laughs> eh, I figure if, if Barton were to die, then Skull will somehow survive in another Trill host on this fleet. So if I die, the list that Skull will do will still continue uh, uh, Admiral uh, I don't normally say this but I'm entirely confused and I believe that if I leave I will be less confused 
That is probably for the best, Commander. Dismissed. And, and he will just give like a like a, a smirk and a toothy grin and walk out of the office. So, uh, because I love irony, uh, Mr. Skull, would you care to roll me a fitness medicine, please? Okay. Uh, fitness medicine. Where is... I, haven't, I don't think I've actually rolled a thing for Skull yet this game. Uh, PC. Fitness plus medicine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I have iron stomach. Uh, I, I'm assuming... If I know what you're rolling for, I have iron stomach. Can I use that as a focus? I'm going to say no, because this is not something you would have eaten. Okay, fair enough. So, one success. Uh, with one success, uh, you're feeling a little bit warm. Just just a little bit. You know, it's maybe a little bit hot in here. <sighs> Computer, fresh pitcher of ice water. Cam, uh, Cam fetches it for you and puts it in your desk. Is, is everything all right, Admiral? I hope so. I hope so. Dismissed for now. I have paperwork to read. Right. And as I drink a thing of... As I gulp down a full glass of water, and I just cough quietly to myself as I continue reading. All right. So we cut back to the Ophion. So at this point... Uh, you are in a uh, somewhat perilous situation. Uh, you have uh, two ships on the field, what could be 11 more moon-sized uh, repositories of drones. The IO is severely damaged. And, uh, oh, you're also in the Gamma Quadrant, 20,000 light years away from home. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, it is the Ophion's turn to act. Uh, I roll to wake up in a cold sweat. This was all a dream. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, choosing dis to disbelieve will not work here. So, what actions do we have left on the Ophion? We've got blue and purple. Yeah, Three you've times. got blue and purple, and I believe that's it. Or no, you've got sensors, too. That's why I usually don't angle the ship, because... Uh, oh, no. Yeah, Apparently, sorry. sensors just never was here. Alright, there you go. Now you should be able to see sensors. So I think, yeah, scanning for weakness and then a command when fire might be that. Oh, we used our internal systems last time, didn't we? To, yeah, uh, so actually you guys are at a two. All right, so... So that was it. I probably got rid of, like, sensors rather than internals. Yeah. All right, so there you go. So I'm going to use command to order us to t attack. Okay. That sound good to everybody? A scan yeah. for weakness first, though, or... Oh, you have that ability. I thought I thought you were okay. Right, go ahead. We'll do that next turn then. Scan turn weakness on Latoral A. Okay. So, uh, because it is a medium uh, distance away, it will be a uh, difficulty two task. Uh, if I recall correctly, that is a a uh, control and science, and the ship is assisting with sensors and security. You have advanced sensors, so it's back down to a difficulty of one. All right, That's very nice. Three successes for me, yeah, and so for you're up to five momentum. Very nice. Could and, yeah. we just, um, uh, guys? Why don't we just uh, spend two momentum, retain the initiative, and just obliterate them now? Sure. Okay. And I get to assist with the attack. You do indeed. All right, so I choose one officer, and I choose their shots, and I say, blow them out of the water. Okay. So I, I, It says I assist in this task, using my command discipline. Um, yeah, you assist with presence command. Uh, you're going to be rolling presence command. Uh, Shatsu is going to be rolling a control security. Uh, I believe our uh, prayer you'll have to... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's Mito, right? Yep, Mito. Uh, Mito is going to be rolling uh, Insight Engineering, and then on top of all that, the ship is assisting with uh, a weapons and security. And the I difficulty... assist. I only roll one d twenty, right? Yes. Um, uh, I'll grab the ship. Now, normally this would just be a difficulty two, but because I have some threat left over, let's bump that up to a difficulty four. Um, and you said what for the ship again? I'm sorry. Weapons security. Got it. All right, so I see two successes so far. 
I see four successes. Nice. So okay. we just need to see one success from Shatsu. And okay, good. Two from Shatsu. Very I nice. have a visor. Whenever you assist another character using your command discipline, the, the character being assisted may re-roll one d twenty. Or right. do you just leave that zero there? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, so. If you're feeling lucky. Well, that's that's that's, that's I'm feeling lucky. If this is a complication, you're going out the airlock. Nice. Uh, so we should be at uh, two momentum. Yeah. And I generate a bonus we two left. momentum. Oh, okay. do you? Cool. Yep. When the attack is successful, because of my exploit engineering flaw, if the attack is successful, you generate one bonus momentum. All right. So we're at five momentum, then, I believe. So we're, we're four, putting... We spent, two, we spent two to retain the initiative, but yep. we just generated three. We're yeah. putting some into... Oh, what are we attacking with? We're attacking with phasers? You would have done with phasers, yes. Yeah. So how much power are we putting into that? We would have needed to declare yeah, it before the Yeah, you needed to declare it before the rolls. Right. Fuck. All right. So we're rolling... How many challenge dice? Should be five plus your, or your security plus your scale. So five plus three, so eight. Okay. So you do have three bonus momentum. That's uh, just sort of floating at the moment. You could spend one to re-roll. Yeah, I'll spend one to re-roll those zeros. Okay. Or, yeah, how many zeros is that one? Two, four. three, four. Zero. Okay, so you're up to nice. ten damage. Uh, would you like to spend anything on piercing? Yeah. Okay. Two. It'll be penetrating. So. So. Well, we have uh, the two because we're, we're two floating from the phasers, right? So we yeah. So you one, should still be a three oh, momentum right. overall. Oh, right, I forgot those. Yep, yeah. okay. Okay, so uh, you do 10, and because spread was not declared, uh, it's just going to do the 10. Uh, so the good news is you are able to knock its shields offline, but uh, it's still kicking. Which means, uh, following, up, uh, following up with yours, it just single-mindedly keeps shooting at you. Almost like it's a broken AI that doesn't know anything better. And yeah, with that crit, uh, it is able to hit you again. Uh, this time you're going to lose three power, so I believe you're back down to six. Because it's one to fire phasers in the first place, so yeah, you guys are back down to six power. And yeah, uh, Littoral B uh, only has one action remaining. So Latoral B is just gonna fire at the Ganymede. It's not really expecting to do anything, but yeah, Ganymede just it's fine. Uh, so at this point, uh, we're gonna reset the the round order. So Ophion goes back to five. Latorals go back to four. Uh, Ganymede gets its turn back, and the IO is still disabled. All right. So it could be either the Ganymede or the Ophion acting next. Oh, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm thinking Ganymede. Yeah. All right. Uh, phaser cannons on the Littoral B. All right. Go ahead and uh, let's have Prier. Why don't we have you do the uh, Callisto roll? And uh, it, there you go. Uh, nice. And if someone could do weapons and security for the Ganymede, please. I got it. Weapons security? Mm-hmm. All right, so hey, you get a momentum. And yeah, go ahead and uh, roll me your phaser cannon damage. Uh, Prier, since you did the roll, let's have you do it. Okie dokie. Nine. Nine challenge dice. Straight down the enemy's gullet. Okay. Uh, remember, you are using phasers, so you do have versatile too. Uh, can I spend one of the versatile momentum to re-roll the zeros? You certainly can. Okay, so and you're up to the, 11. The other one, too, was it piercing to get rid of two resistance? Correct. Yeah. Penetration. Yeah. Piercing, penetration, two Ps. Yeah, it's, you know. Uh, but what matters is you do enough damage that the Ganymede's tactical officer is able to bifurcate uh, the littoral B vessel, much like they did with carrier B, and uh, short work uh, is made of the vessel, and it is no longer on the field. 
So, uh, Latoral A is uh, going to take its turn next. Uh, with it being the only remaining ship on the field, it is going to attempt to broadcast yet again. So, uh, we're just going to be looking at the crew rolls here. Yes, with a crew roll of two, uh, I would say that passive sensor scans, of course, if you wanted to know more, you'd have to do an actual, actual scan. Uh, sensors are indicating that now the lower uh, artificial moon is starting to open up. <sighs> but the good news is I don't have any threat remaining, so I cannot retain the initiative. So it is the Ophion's turn again. Question: Since they're broadcasting and we're gonna mm. scanning, could we have? Could I get a scan of it? Trying to find a way to like send a counter signal. I will say that if you spend two momentum to create the advantage that you were ready and waiting to jam them, I will allow you to roll a signals jamming check. Everyone okay with that? Yes. 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 As much, as much as momentum and threat as you want. Yeah. Alright, so it will be two momentum straight up so that you can do the task, which takes you down to two momentum. And yeah, a signals jamming is a control engineering. It has a power requirement of one, and the ship is assisting with communications and security. And I need to know at what difficulty uh, you are jamming at. You can pick one, two, or three, and I'll be nice and point out the fact that they rolled at least two successes. All I think I'm going to buy, so let's say, let's say three. Let's okay. Say. I'm gonna buy. Spend one, uh, one more momentum to buy a dice. Okay. All right. So no help uh, from the Ophion. Oh. Uh, communication interception as a uh, focus. Oh yeah, most definitely. Do you want to burn your determination? Yes. Yes, I do. I would very much like to um, burn my determination, which means I won't be buying that die because we won't have it. Uh, actually, uh, I'll have to burn both momentum. Yeah, okay. Okay. See, so, yeah, I burn my determination. Um, uh, we are many. We are one. Stretch. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. Good. I don't know if I have a good determination for this. What are they? Yeah, it's we are many. We are one. I believe in the Federation. Doing the right thing is its own reward, and you can't uncross a line. You are doing the right thing in stopping them activating. I'll That's let a bit it of a happen, stretch. but in the yeah. future, we probably should be a little bit more strict about talents or values. Yeah. Well, you're to, you believe in the Federation, which means you believe in its ideals, which means protecting <laughs> an innocent species. <laughs> against this berserker drone race. Yeah, it's yeah, we are trying to defend a planet. All so right, I'll I let you do it. Do. <laughs> All right, so I'm assuming two free successes is what you're two using free successes, it for? Well, as oh. well as five wow. of the rolls. The two wow. crits are So, uh, yeah, with your signal jamming strength of a three, uh, that means you get four momentum back. And yeah, instead of the moon opening up, you jam it completely. Uh, you prevent it from sending off the activation signal. So that means that uh, you are going to use your sensor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you already got it. And uh, you go down to power four. Uh, but yeah, you do stop them from getting a signal out, which is important. We're at power five. I already took the one power away. Oh, okay. Yeah, then you're at power five. Um, so yeah, that is your turn. Uh, would you like to retain the initiative? Uh, you have the momentum. Yeah, I want to shoot this thing before it has another attempt to do that. Okay, it would be two, two momentum to retain the initiative. Looks like you're spending it. All right, so Shatsu, control security, difficulty two, and uh, someone gets weapon security for the Ophion. All right, one success for the Ophion. <clears throat> Uh, who's rolling Shatsu? Oh. 
I'll let someone else do it because I probably just used up all my luck. <laughs> Prier, why don't we have you do it? Because I feel like we're not having enough engagement with Prier today. All right. Let me find Chatsu's sheet. Commander, uniform code regulations say that you must lint roll your your uniform of any fur before you come on to duty. <laughs> What's Chatsu rolling? Uh, she's rolling control security. And she does have a focus. All right. Hey, two's all you need. So go ahead and roll me your uh, your phaser damage. All right. Are you spending uh, to get rid of the resistance or no? Yeah, we'll spend one of momentum. Well, remember, you have versatile, so you have two free momentum to spend on whatever. Oh, well, then, yeah. Those two on penetration as well. Okay. And that is enough that uh, with the final shot fired, uh, you destroy Littoral A, and the system goes quiet. Calder Bridge. Bridge here. Permission to take a medical team over to the uh, IO to treat their wounded? They got beaten up pretty bad over there. We don't. And uh, Seamus is okay to deal with them over here. Very well. Make it fast, however. You're not going to stay in the system long. Understood. Yeah. Um, while they're doing that, we could also take a shuttle to the moon. Uh, so, um, we do have several inactive carriers there we can investigate, strip mine, look at. I'm hesitant to land on it so soon. Let's begin with passive sensor sweeps of its surface first, and then I'll we'll move that. on to... <laughs> I can definitely keep the jamming signal active, so it shouldn't activate again. But that is a that is a lot of ship resources we could use to repair the fleet. We're not even at the planet yet, are we? Well, there is or no was... planet. The, the oh, system, there is a planet. The system ah. is purely asteroid belts with these artificial moons in them. Oh, I, I think he said there was like 12 of them. Yeah, there's 12 ah. of these things. Well, 11 That's now, because you blew up Never one. Mind. But May I suggest we put... Uh communications buoys throughout the system and to broadcast the jamming frequency. This is a very good idea. I'll get to work on that right away. Have um, the... Are we able to... With our comm breach on the... Uh, are we able to contact the Amalthea? Uh, you are indeed. You uh, you still have the breach in terms of breach repair, but you, you have communications back up and running. Let's kind of lock... Uh, please... Uh, Put together a investigative team and take a shuttle. Uh, the OPM will begin dispersing jamming probes through the system and the other artificial moons, and then we will inform the Amalthea of their updated progress. Okay. So, speaking of the Amalthea, find the proper. There it is. So, in sickbay, uh, Jensen is has been treated and is no longer in sickbay. Uh, but Prier, you've gotten a rather, rather large influx of uh, new patients that are coming down with Rigelian fever. Uh, you haven't really figured out where it's coming from at this point, but you just noticed that there has been an uptick in uh, patients reporting it. I'm going to... Uh initiate isolation wards and immediately contact uh, Captain Beckett to have them try to find uh, the um, Ritalin. Okay. So, uh, Beckett, uh, you get the call and uh, you know, you probably tell Hylong to get on it, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, and I will offer to send my best uh, virologist over to help him. Okay. Um, and also go through the medical supplies that we have in uh, Lysithia's hold and see if we happen to have extra. I will say, because we rolled for this, and because you have two years worth of medical supplies, I will say that if you shave off two months of that, so you would be at 22 months of supplies. 
you would have enough Rytalon to deal with this large influx. Okay. Uh, I am willing to take that trade. Um, I then... Um, I guess I'll tell Preer that uh, I'll... Not only will I look for a new supply of it, but I'll do him one better and um, ask him to pick a spot. Pick a spot, sir? Yes. Pick a spot on the Amalthia that you would like a rather large amount of Rytalon to be transported over. I quickly th look through the manifest. Uh, it's looking like Cargo Bay 15 is currently empty. It sounds like a good place to start. Wonderful. I will have some sent over, and I will also send over um, Lieutenant Vara to help with um, administering of it, as she is uh, quite proficient in virology. That would be amazing. Thank you, Captain. And the and moment uh, you get off the horn, uh, a very important patient walks into your sick bay. It is none other than the Admiral himself. And uh, Skull... Uh, you're feeling uh, dizzy. Uh, you're feeling short-sighted. Uh, it's hard to breathe, and generally, you're just not doing great. I mean, I've made it four years into Admiralty with being short-sighted. I think this is okay, <laughs> but the rest is really not feeling all that good. Uh, doctor, I I hate to be a strain, uh, but I'm really not feeling all that good. And this time, I don't think it was anything that I ate. I immediately grab my tricorder and go. Okay, so this is going to be a reason medicine difficulty two. I'm going to use one of the momentums for a third die. All right. And I'm assuming infectious diseases apply. It does. <laughs> Very nice. So uh, you get back two momentum, which brings you up to three. So, Prayer, remember, you can ask questions, but uh, the good news is he doesn't have Rigelian fever. Uh, does, does his illness show of anything that we have on record? Is that what you're asking for a momentum question? Uh, yes. Then yes. Uh, bringing you to two momentum overall. You've seen these symptoms before in your days as a medical officer. Unfortunately, there's only one time that you've seen it, and that was when a symbiont was being rejected by the host. Well, Admiral Skull, we could have some problems here. It's not the Rige it's not Rigelian fever, is it? Well, that's the good news. That's the good news. <coughs> Sorry, <clears throat> can't uh, volume. Keep it down. The bad news is it seems like Barton is starting to reject Skull. I immediately look down to my belly and I just poke it a little bit. Are you all right down there, buddy? Anything we need to talk about? I realize I should probably go lie down somewhere. Honestly, sir, the best thing right now is to probably put you in a sta in stasis. I just give you the quick look of what bef the emotional rejection of such an idea, first of all, and then I settle down and go, Oh, damn it. And I just taught Vedu how to make slamashi stew, and I was looking forward to eating that tonight. <sighs> Very well. Um, Skull to Commander Cam. Go ahead, Admiral. You're going to want to come down to sick bay really quickly. Uh, I'm on my way, sir. And... Because you said really quickly, she literally sight to sight transports next to you. Uh, Hi, Commander. Hi. What's what's uh, oh God, Admiral? You you do, you do not look good. Uh, I still look better than my past host. Well, to be fair, she was found 
bifurcated in a sh- in a fighter accident. But <clears throat> it's a fun word, by the way, bifurcated. It's fun to say. Yes. Anyway, it is. sorry. I need to focus. What's what's uh, wrong with him, Doctor? Apparently, my symbiote has had enough of me and wishes to find a new host. I refuse to let that happen. Right now, I'm going into stasis. Um, you have access to all of my directives. Um, until I get better, uh, Mirthrin has command of the fleet. However, if he need, if you feel the need to override him, here's my command codes. I already have them, sir. I've had them for years. Why does that not surprise me? And if I, if I, when I come out of stasis, and if I hear that you've been impersonating me for whatever reason, I'm going to bust you down to Ensign so hard you're, it'll take you a week to reform. I, okay, sir. I don't think I've actually ever impersonated you, but I, I understand your concern. Just, uh, just in case. Just, you never know. And I'm saying this as I'm stripping down into my uh, into your medical garbs and stepping into a trance into a stasis pod. All right. Very well, Prayer. With luck, I will see you soon. Indeed, By the way, Admiral. I am not your highest priority right now, despite what the pips may say. See to the fleet first. Understood, Admiral. I will make sure I get you out of there quickly. Oh yes, and tell Vetu that I love. And then this, <laughs> yep, and, and then, then the stasis takes over. And then it stays over. And that, gentlemen, is where we have to bring the session to a close. So, uh, for those of you watching on Twitch uh, or on YouTube, or if you're listening in, this is where we're going to end the stream. So, thank you so much for watching, and we will see these guys next week. Bye, stream.